We are ready to go. That was the scene about an hour and a half ago. Takeoff time. Lake Point Marina, Lake Eufaula in Alabama. Day two of the Bassmaster Elite Series 2020. Getting down to business. There's the fellow who did his business better than anyone else yesterday. Bill Lowen, the veteran. A lot of veterans atop the leaderboard. We'll get a look at that leaderboard in just a moment. But the rest of these anglers, 86 of them out there today. One thing in mind, just make the cut. Make it into the top 40. At the end of today, we are in a special place, Lake Eufaula, unbelievably the first time the Bassmaster Elite Series has ever been to this special fishery which holds so much history of the sport of bass fishing, competitive bass fishing, big fish catches. It's all part, it's all woven into the legend and lore of this place. As we look at these anglers, the best in the business at the top of their game, the rules of the game are this, four days of fishing. We're on day number two right now. 86 anglers, actually, days one and two, and this is the second day. You gotta make the 40 cut. If you wanna go on to day number three, eight hours of fishing today, a five fish limit, your best five fish of the day, or what you bring to the weigh-in stand. We'll be down to 10 anglers on Saturday. Championship Saturday. Jamie Hartman right there, who won twice last year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. That's trouble for everybody in the field right there, Mark Zona. You, you know, uh, really, we, we generally talk about the leader on day number two of a Bassmaster Elite Series event, but really the MVP of day number one was Lake Eufaula. This lake has been pressured, pounded, really, the last two weeks. Uh, I think everybody that got on stage yesterday definitely took notice you had better catch them, and you had better catch them in a big way to just hang in the game today. You went a little bit out on the limb. You said yesterday, I believe it's going to take 20 pounds if you're going to be a top-tier guy after one day. You were spot on, absolutely spot on. 15 guys with 20 Think pounds about this. Plus. Think about this. This time of year in southern Alabama, if you catch a five-bass limit that weighs 18 pounds, you've done something. You have caught five big ones. If you've done that in this tournament, you are sitting in 30th place right now. <laughs> way How'd you like in. to shoot 10 under par and be in 60th you place? And you're worried about the cut. The great Mark Zona, I'm Tommy Sanders. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios. Also on hand, Ronnie Moore and Mike Sukon. Ronnie, what do you got going this morning? You, you guys have been at it for a long time. I'm excited to see. We had Facebook Live this morning, got to see a little bit of action. But yesterday, we had over 70 bass in that four plus pound region. I know that these guys are finally getting their feet settled. The weather's been unstable. Now that it's settling out, how they'll uh, how they'll adjust today will determine going into the weekend. I'm on, the yeah, go Suge. I'm on big fish alert and, and Chris Aldane, that, that seven pounder is gonna top our Phoenix Boats big bass of yesterday, Mike Huff's six pound, 12 ounce fish. We also got another big one, uh, Todd Auten with a five pounder. And we'll, we'll see if anybody can top uh, Zaldane. That looks bigger than six eight he put in on Bass. That's track. the way to kick off a show. <laughs> I think everyone would agree with that. Let's take you out to our fantastic playing field. You gave it props this morning, Mark Zona. Lake Eufaula is legendary for a number of reasons, especially the way they're catching them this week, long after the spawn. Exactly right. And we're going to be with your leaders here on Lake Eufaula in Alabama, right on the Alabama Georgia border taking a look at our Humminbird lay of the lake, really the home of Humminbird. Yep. And it's got two different faces. And we talked about it yesterday. You're looking at about an 85 mile long playing field from the dam up the Chattahoochee River. And the lower end, we're gonna see a lot of the guys that we saw yesterday fishing offshore. As we get up that river system, we'll see a lot more shallow water fishing, which I think we're going to get a glimpse of today. All right, shallow versus deep. That's sort of been the point of contention throughout, even before the tournament started here. Let's show you something from the weigh-in yesterday. It was exciting. Here's a guy who we talked about being a little bit troubling for the rest of the field. Two-time winner last season, Jamie Hartman, the New York native. Exactly right. Taking a look at some one of the hottest anglers in the country, especially on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the last two events. Todd Auten sit, sitting in fifth place, 21-15, just to get a camera in his boat. Oh my gosh, and there's Clark Winlet. You say you have confidence that this guy may be onto something here, Mark Zona. Clark Winlet, definitely, probably more confidence. Well, I don't know if he has as much as this guy right here <laughs> already with a big morning. Chris Aldane sitting in third place. 22 pounds and two ounces. How about third year angler Kyle Monty? We saw him at the Lake 10 Killer putting on a little bit of a show for us there. He did put on a show yesterday, almost 23 pounds of fish. And the one angler doing something totally different than anybody else in our top 10. One of the best shallow water fishermen on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Bill Lowen with 
23-4 for a one-day catch. Oh, what is going to hold up today? Is it going to completely swap around? Or are people going to be able to sustain what they had going on day number one? It's a four-day event, and those are always the big questions we face as we move further and further toward the championship. There's our leaderboard right now, and Jamie Hartman wasted no time. Putting fish in the boat, he is on top of a good margin right now ahead of Clark Winlet. Matt Airy coming from outside the top ten in order to snatch third place. Zaldane, we saw that giant catch right there. He just needs to fill out a, a good limit around that one, and he'll be looking really, really good. Taking a look at that top ten right there. If you weren't with us yesterday, the first two to three hours were so critical for all of our anglers. It just seems like this lake ignites early and later in the day, and that's exactly what we saw on day number one. The way there's the six anglers, the top six that we're going to be with uh, almost continually all day long today. And we mentioned the uh, early and often exploits of Jamie Hartman, the Oneida Lake, uh, New York sort of fixture who moved down south and joined the Elite Series and has really, really made a name for himself. Okay. Maybe they're on. Get on up in here. There we go. Come on. All right. Push. Stay down there, big head. Stay down there. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. Look at this. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Oh my gosh. No, that Alabama rig is not tied on to my line. <laughs> that fish has got five baits in his face and he still ate my worm. Just to confirm, see that worm? That's mine. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I think he's gonna help just a touch. Oh yes, now we're cooking, baby. Boom! Yes! Against it all, so I've tried diff something different. I can't get it down there, so. I come above the school right now and I went to a one ounce and I'm going to see if I can keep it down there on the bottom. Um, I know they're there. I took my very first cast with the swim bait and I caught, what is he, three and a half, three and three quarters, something like that, whatever it is. First cast, but it's so hard to hit it where it's at. So I'm going to try to get above it and throw back. That got to the bottom a lot quicker. Now if I can just keep it down there. Now that I repositioned, I have to figure out my cast now too. So let's see what happens. Man, if I can just get one or two more of those big threes, I'm good, we're gone. But that wind seems to be, I thought it was gonna die down and I could get on the top side of the school, but it's not, it's picking back up. So there's one. Oh, <laughs> smacked it. So I, there he is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> there's two bites on the cast. So I think I know where they're at. I think. <laughs> I think they're still scattered, but I don't want to pull them off of there. Jamie Hartman, following that script that you roughly laid out this morning, catch them early. Get the job done early. Don't take chances. And really, if you watch it, that, that was just a massive flurry. And when he started rotating baits, he started slowly upgrading. But really, the story of the morning, Chris Zaldane came out firing on day number one, did the majority of his damage in the first hour. And what we got to see when he got out to his primary spot this morning, 
literally put one of the biggest bass we've seen the entire tournament in his boat. Stay, stay on there. Stay on there. Unless it's, oh yeah. Stay. Unless it's hooked weird. No, no, it's a big one. Gosh, stay on there. Yeah! <laughs> Ah, hold on, we got standby. We got boats coming by. My floor's wet, carpet's wet. It's good. Ah, that's a giant right there. Yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo! That's a big old you fall a bass right there. Little. All right, good morning everybody. Quick update here. Elite Series Tournament on Lake Eufaula. I've got three fish in my live well. One of them is an absolute Lake Eufaula giant. It's over six pounds and I've got two other little ones in there. Um, but I'm just kind of bouncing around. We've got a little, uh, you know, conditions change. Uh, we've got a north wind, five to seven miles per hour, and it is absolutely clear out here. So sunny, sunny skies and a, a slight northern breeze. Um, the, kind of the remnants of, of that storm, Cristobal, is kind of it's made its way through. So um, you know, whenever that happens, things change. Things change above water. Things change underwater. So. Today's gonna to be all about adjustments. Uh, I didn't quite get on a, a super fast and furious start like I did yesterday morning, but we did get one big giant one in there, so that really, really helps. I'm able to fish comfortable for the rest of the day. It's all about making adjustments. I will be fishing a little bit shallow. Um, I'll spend a little bit more time shallow. Uh, I caught one big flip fish yesterday, uh, shallow, and, and I really wanna expand on that, so. Um, yeah! And we'll just keep testing the offshore stuff. You know, the main river ledges in 30 feet. We'll test the brush piles in 15 to 20. Right uh, it seems like that's been the most consistent. And then we're going to head up uh, and fish Woo! the shallow stuff. So, three fish in the box. It's 7.15, and we got a lot of work to do today. So, it's going to be a fun one, no doubt. Chris Aldain had a sort of a book in today yesterday, had the big flurry and then caught a big one late. In between, not so much. And he said, it the way he, I figured out some things. I may know what to do during the middle of the day today. So we'll be on him all day long to be sure. Exactly right. To start the morning, though, with a <laughs> an unofficial six and a half pounder, probably a little better, as Such said, uh, that, that, that gets the ball rolling pretty, pretty well. Your day one leader, though, Bill Lowen, one of the only anglers that started shallow, stayed okay. shallow, and said, I will do this the entire tournament, and I feel like, which is rare for this time of year, they are coming to me. All right, we got three so far this morning. Um, one decent one. And two, uh, two little ones. Um, we just come to a little spot where I got some good bites in practice. Caught a good one yesterday, uh, swimming a jig. Like I've been saying, my predominant pattern has been flipping the water willow out on the river. Um, we're gonna hit this little stretch and then a little stretch over there and then we're gonna head to the river. Um, kind of worried about this wind direction on the way it's blown because it's gonna be blowing right on the water willow that I caught them in yesterday. Um, but we're gonna go and see what happens. If not, the river's full of Water willow will just run around and like I said earlier, the whole key to that deal out there is finding some water willow that has a ditch or a river channel or a creek channel or something that runs up against it. So worst comes to worst, we'll just look at that lake master and take off down the lake and find some new water willow if, if the wind's destroyed what I'm wanting to fish on. So uh, all I can say at this point is stay tuned because we ain't going to stop. We are going to keep the hammer down. and. Uh, Try to stay leading this thing. Uh. Well, Bill Lowen expressed after the weigh-in yesterday, he believes a significant number of fish don't even know that there's deep water out there, that they live, they are residents of shallow water. Oh. That's what he's counting on right there. But look at Jamie Hartman. He knows where they live a little bit deeper. Obviously, he has loaded the boat this morning. 
Drew Benton following up a big move for him early on today. Clark Winland steady in there. Matt Airy up into the top 10 from outside. And of course, we saw Chris Saldane with that giant to start his day. What's on the way? Who knows? It's going to be good. We'll be right back. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bass University is all about. If you love bass fishing, <laughs> then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Power Pole, Skeeter Boats, Yamaha, and by Toyota. On the Chattahoochee River, that's the place right there, legendary Lake Eufaula. Such a pleasure to be here, finally. The Bassmaster Elite Series back in business in 2020, second day of this four-day event, the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite. Jamie Hartman started the day fifth place, loading the boat early, getting a good lead. Drew Benton, though, has cut into his lead a little bit in the last hour. Clark Wendland, good start today. Clark Wendland, one of the legends of bass fishing, has been a respected figure for a long, long time. And you know, when he gets uh, when he gets in the mix in a tournament, he's very dangerous. Exactly right. Taking a look at Clark Wendell this morning. Usually, we see Clark Wendell fishing very, very shallow. One of the best shallow water anglers in the world. He said, I've come to this lake way too many times and got absolutely pummeled fishing shallow. I will live offshore. And here was the scary thing, very dangerous. He said, I'm not gonna run out of brush piles and offshore spots, I've done my homework, and I honestly don't think I've hit my best stuff yet in this event. This is legend for sure. This is home in the Austin area of Clark Winland. And a little bit different, we'll really start to break this down later in the show, is if you look at, he's fishing offshore, but relatively close to the bank. A lot of the guys like Chris Zaldane that we've been on, way offshore, closer to the main river channel. Jimmy Hartman, kind of the same thing. Clark Wendelin, though, getting a lot of bites this morning. You know, really this morning is gone. It's gone good as far as bites go. I've, I've now caught six keepers and, I mean, I had a, you know, a decent morning, but I just don't have any good ones, you know. You need those four, four pound plus fish, and I got, you know, a couple two and a halfs and three two pounders, so, you know, not, 
not great, but I mean, it's just a, for me, it's just how many brush piles can I fish and catch some fish, hopefully to fish, the, throw it in the right one and catch a big one. Clark Winnett, obviously, you, you mentioned the number of numbers is what he's got. He's got it. You, you, you don't worry about a place not being able to replenish. You go to a next place. Exactly. And it's really a law of average. What he's trying to, a lot of times, you know, especially what we saw yesterday, guys would sit on an area and just kind of saturate it, you know, for an hour to two hours. He said, uh, my law of average on this lake, and I've seen other guys win tournaments here, fish as many brush piles as you can by the end of the day. Somewhere in there, you're going to catch five big ones. Yeah, the arithmetic's got to work out for you sooner or later. A little bit different for Kyle Monte. Okay, yeah. Where he's really just fishing one isolated brush pile. <laughs> that's that, that's being a little more risky out there, I guess. And this is what happened earlier this morning with Kyle Monte. Falling off the pace just a he little bit. Good. He did put two keepers in the boat. Little guy. That's a better one. So we haven't gone too far this morning. I'm really kind of hitting every angle on these little piles off the ends of these docks here. I did most of my damage yesterday right here. So I think I came here a little early, but we got another competitor behind us. Looks like he's doing the same thing. We did catch a couple fish, one decent one, one little one. But I'm just gonna let the conditions kind of let us know what to do. We catch most of them out of brush piles if they're off the end of a dock or you know, less than 12 foot of water, basically. Right here, it's about eight foot. Trying to find stuff off the beaten path. Trying to figure out if they're reloading as well. We're trying to determine that today. Keep our options open. I've got a bunch of Kyle Monty uh, did himself a lot of good yesterday. Had a very disappointing finish close to home at the first regular season event there on the St. John's River. And uh, that second place finish, or second place standing yesterday, helped him a lot, almost 23 pounds. Let's look at the man who quietly snuck into second place, the Bassmaster Classic this year, earlier here in the state of Alabama on Lake Gunnersville. Exactly right. Doing something totally different than anybody in our field. Uh, fishing an area that's very well known, a, a little cut through on one of our causeways here on Lake Eufaula. And he said most of his damage was done right here Not on day number one. I'm a one. A little one, I think. Well, he ain't too little. Number two. Jeez, don't do that. <sighs> Boy, that's a. Well, it's been uh, a different morning. It's definitely been slower, but I've got one good bite and uh, two I got to get rid of, but. Um, place where I caught most of them yesterday, they just wasn't happening there. The winds turned around 180. And uh, I don't know if those fish just moved or might show up later, but um, I'm, I'm going to check it several times today and uh, see if we can catch a couple off there. But I did lose a pretty good fish in there earlier, but um, it's, it's definitely a different day. I mean, Luckily, you know, I pick up this jig and still feel like I can catch a good string of fish, but uh, it's just a lot of a lot of fishing. I mean, it's nothing 
nowhere where you said you could just go and catch one, you know, but uh, this kind of this little areas that some of these fish have little brand beds and stuff. But again, Todd Otten, one five pounder in the boat and two barely and that keepers. That was a big one, yeah, that man. Was a good one. one. I guess yes. when I first looked at it, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Well, you're kind of like you paying attention to the place and you didn't look at the fish. No idea. I think he's a good one, though. Yeah. It's the porker. Gotta change that angle, bud. Got to. That's what it is. Heard Jamie Hartman say you have to you change the angle, the angle of the cast. With that wind three, shift three, this two, morning, six, guaranteed six, a lot of these deeper one, fish will reposition. Come on. Yes. All right. We'll take a 291 to get rid of number five. Yes, sir. Looks a lot bigger, don't he? Now there's a healthy one. Big old gut. Some of them, man, have fed back up, but them late ones, they did not. Thank you for easing my pain, buddy. <laughs> See, I got that one. Mm. Jamie Hartman's been pain free for a couple of years now. And he pretty he much has, has. He has made everyone else feel the pain pretty, pretty significantly. He, he made the comment last night after the weigh in with Dave Mercer. He said, I've got one spot that's magical. I don't have two, oh. but if they reload, I will knock their lights out. And that is exactly what Jamie Hartman did early this morning. Yeah, have a look at it if yeah. you missed out on it. Caught some good, good, <laughs> solid keepers. <laughs> Top dead center, right where I like it. To say this was an unusual limit is an oh, understatement yes. as well. It We're was. to see something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. We'll talk about that a little bit later. It was one of the... <laughs> you don't see it every day. Stranger fish catches we've seen right there in a few years. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm going to tell you what that is. That is a hungry bass right there. Oh, my Mike God. Sanders. Probably didn't even notice he had that hanging off of it. Not had where to get its teeth straightened, huh? Okay. <laughs> Jamie Hartman on top, 36 pounds and 4 ounces. Those are Bass Track numbers, unofficial, of course, until weigh-in time. Clark Winlet, Drew Benton, Matt Airy, and Chad Pipkins moving out of the top ten into the top five. 32 pounds and five ounces. Zal Dane, you saw that big one. He's going to work very hard to fill out a good limit there. We're going to watch him and all the rest at work today. When we come back on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Minkota. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here.
You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Hope you are enjoying Bassmaster Live today, second day of the DeWalt Elite event on Lake Eufaula. This is our morning session. We'll go until 11 o'clock Eastern time. We'll uh, step out for about an hour, let the fishing continue, and step back in at noon Eastern with the final three hours today. Taking you right up to weigh-in time, right up to the end of the fishing day. We've got 86 anglers out there, and as far as they're concerned, this is the most important day of the season. Uh, and as it should be, I mean, because it's all about points. That's how you get over in the sport of bass fishing. If you miss out the day, you don't make the top 40. You don't get a chance at tomorrow. You leave points on the table. You have a chance maybe to go on to the final day, the top 10, the select 10. We're going to get a chance at that championship trophy. Jamie Hartman is uh, putting some hay in the barn with that end in mind today. A great morning for him, Drew Benton. Also having great success out there on this incredible, incredible fishery that we're learning more about with, with every hour, Mark Dona. Tommy Sanders, is it too early to do it? What's that? I, I want to talk about Chris Zaldane and what we're going to give him unofficially for today thus far. Okay. What happened earlier this morning, you have to say, it's going to be a contender for the Power Pole Replay of the Day and potentially the event, my friend. Oh my gosh. Let's exactly. About and it. here's what I here, oh. here's what I want you to look at. When he catches it, he hides it, starts screaming, hiding it no, from no, other big. competitors, and then starts screaming yet again. Oh, He's running there. silent, but it, it, running deep, but it, not it, running yeah. silent. It's there. counterintuitive to what, what I think he was trying yeah. to do. Hold on. <laughs> -hoo -hoo. That's a big old you fall a bass right there. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll get the whole catch in Woo! in a minute what happened. But I, I'm going to tell you, Tommy Sanders, I think there's potential right now in the sports world. That could be a sports center top 10 web gem of the day. Oh, yeah. It's, I, got, is that it's got so many dimensions to it. It's I know not there's only. never been a bass catch in a web gem, but it could make it. That, that is your power pole replay. In front of these, these grass spots. learned pretty early yesterday that Chris Zaldane was not faithful to one philosophy or the other, deep versus shallow. He put together a pretty pragmatic day of fishing. Really, if you looked at Zaldane's day yesterday, he fished that one key morning spot offshore, did a lot of his damage, and then really looked like he started practicing, eliminating certain techniques, and adding other techniques. Um, but today he said he'll do a lot more of this, what you're seeing your leader, Bill Lowen, doing. Clark Wendell it hooked up. Oh, yeah. God, he's hooked good way down in there. That's awesome. That's probably a four, four and a half pounder. All right, great deal. We got a two pound bill. Good call right there for Clark Wendelin. Oh man. 
as you said, suits probably a two pound colon. Really, what Clark Wendell was he he was concentrating on. He said, look, guys like Jamie Hartman, Chris Aldane that were fishing in that, call it 15 to 22 foot range offshore, he said, I'm ignoring that. There was way too many boats fishing, practicing offshore in that depth zone. He said, I marked Going as back. many six Jeez, to like 12 feet took of off water brush piles. And he said, I have hundreds of them located. Well. Hartman hooked up again. Yanked a darn rod out of my hand. He ain't big. I thought that was line. Really, when it's just slime. When the fish get <laughs> offshore and they get deeper, Jimmy Hartman has right. proven the last—not not the last year, really the last five years mm -hmm. on the Bassmaster Elite Series. He will be a force come Championship Saturday. Just shy of, just a week shy of one year ago, here in the state of Alabama on Lake Gunnersville. It, well, this was not a special place that no one knew about. Right. I talk about how good he is at deep water, yet he's catching him shallow <laughs> on a top water bait right there. What I like to say is, I bring it early oh in the God. broadcast, oh <laughs> early and often. Let's that's, take that. That's all we have, up, shall we? Really came out of nowhere on Lake Gunnersville. About this time of year last year. Whew. And then. Fishing up in upstate New York, Cayuga Lake. Again, one of those tournaments, you really didn't look at him that much going into the final day of competition. Right, right. But he just kept it going all day long. He caught him early and he kept catching There all are day. big names in the sport of bass fishing that have never won a Bassmaster Elite oh. Series tournament in their life. And to do that twice in one year, huge. One yeah. month almost, 31 days apart is championship <clears throat> days. I mean, you know, you're just guessing. I know, fish, I know. Yeah. Just throwing a blue gill colored swim here. My signature series swim jig with just a little flappy trailer on it. Just the bluegill color has been the deal though. But not yet. But we're working on it. Okay. It's just a little, like I said, bluegill color swim jig with little flappy legs on it. Um, they almost want it kind of gurgled across the top. This is just a hard edge right here, up here through here, as you can see. Um, and they're either getting it swimming right under the surface or gurgling it on top. I'm hoping that's what they do this morning, but. It ain't working out yet so far. Those well, first five, six years Nothing on the Bassmaster Elite Series. A little bait. Bill Lowen had one main mentor. It was actually a traveling companion, too. Yeah. Yeah, he You're exactly you know what I'm talking about. Denny, Denny Brower. Denny yeah. Brower, who won Jeff doing Peter this two no years. Problem. Big tournaments, 2002, 2004 <laughs> here. I can oblige there. Of all the anglers that we got to talk to after the weigh-in on day one, Bill Lowen and Clark Wendelin were very, very confident in what they were doing. And I, I know that Jamie Hartman is our unofficial leader right now. He was a little more... Clark Wendelin hooked up again.
we saw so many. There's nothing wrong with that fish. That's just the rigors of the spawn. And one of the things that just happens when you Just catching them solid this morning. Yeah. I mean, and with and, regularity. And here was the difference looking at Clark Wendelin from a lot of the guys that fished offshore yesterday that caught them early and caught them late. Clark Wendelin said, no, I'm pretty much catching them all day long. That is a scary proposition for the rest of the field. Wendelin, as a matter of fact, starts this day after yesterday's performance in third place. An angler of the year points for this 2020 season. We have got a long way to go, of course, before we get to the end. Calendar-wise, fishing days-wise, it is bearing down on us. So Jamie Hartman also getting the job done today. That is what you want to see on the leaderboard. If you look at those weights stacked like that, two hours into the second day of competition. We've got plenty more on the way. We're going to take you all the way to 11 o'clock Eastern time here with Bassmaster Live on incredible Lake Eufaula. There's more Bassmaster Live on the way. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. Skeeter, is it still setting the standard? Let's see. First Bass Boat, first U.S. Coast Guard approved Bass Boat, first Beehole Pad Design, largest owner's tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bass Boat. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex Series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options leaving nothing left to desire. So yes, yes we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. Watching at the Waltz Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Mincota. Bassmaster Live, we've got action going on fast and furious on Lake Eufaula, but let's look forward to 2021 and the World Championship, the Bassmaster Classic. About three weeks ago, it was announced. Lake Ray Roberts on the Trinity River system there. Fort Worth, Texas, just to the south and west of Lake Ray Roberts, is going to be our host city. What a great place to host the World Championship and the all-new Dickies Arena state-of-the-art facility. It will be a magnificent time. Chris Saldane, who we saw leading off our show today, is a resident of Fort Worth. Chris is keenly interested in making the classic, as are all of our 86 anglers out there fishing today. But make your plans, if you can, for Fort Worth third week in March 2021. There's our leaderboard as it stands after a couple of hours of fishing. Jamie Hartman still in the lead, but boy, look at Clark Wendland. 
solid, steady, as you said, Mark Zona. He's not catching them just early, just late. He's catching them all day. You know, and it's really two different game plans at the top of our leaderboard. Clark Wendelin relying on, he said, a law of averages. Fish as many brush piles as I can. It's not hard to find them here on Lake Eufaula. They're about... Oh, about every 20 feet under the water surface from there, Jamie Hartman living off of one spot. And you have to ask yourself, Jamie Hartman with yet another good stringer right now, he said one of the keys, it, it, it's my only area I have. Yeah, I can continue fishing areas where there's other anglers that are pressuring some of these brush piles. But he said my deep spot kind of down near the dam, he said, I'm going to at some time have to back off of it and save them for day three. Taking a look at the six anglers we have uh, full-time coverage of all day today. We'll be dropping on on many, many more anglers during the course of this day. Matt Harry had a great season uh, last year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And a very impressive angler from North Carolina. Started the day outside the top ten, and he has moved steadily up the leaderboard through the course of this morning. He's definitely on to something. I think her own Davey uh -oh. Hyde is right there on hey, the now. scene, just like we count on him to be. <laughs> Davey's done it again. Davey, uh, what, do you, what do you, as you survey the scene there with Matt Airy, what are you thinking this morning? Well, I was able to talk to Matt Airy, and I, that's what I want to relate to you guys because it was some great news. He's having a good morning this morning, had a good day yesterday, but there were a lot of people that had good days yesterday looking at that leaderboard yesterday afternoon. Absolutely incredible. Uh, a lot of those guys that probably caught about 15, 16 pounds thought, well, I'll be in, in pretty good shape. And, man, they, they caught him. They caught him. But Matt Airy, I talked to him. He's had a good morning this morning. He said yesterday. I've really had an opportunity to have just like a lights out stringer. He lost a five pounder, jumped off a six pounder and lost another real big one. He's fishing shallow. And what he told me, he came into practice thinking he was gonna fish those brush piles like a lot of guys are doing. Clark Willen's having a, a great day today. There's a lot of people fishing those brush piles. There's a lot of them out there, but the water level is so critical here on Lake Eufaula. And the water just keeps coming up, up and up. It's up uh, from yesterday morning about three inches. From yesterday afternoon, it's about six inches higher than it was. So Matt Airy said in practice, he caught some fish on those brush piles, 16, 17 pounds. But fish shallow the second day of practice, caught about 20 pounds. He says, I've got like 50 or 60 brush piles I have a lot of confidence in, but I can catch bigger fish or had opportunity to catch bigger fish yesterday along the bank. He said, I keep thinking I want to go fish deeper, but... I just keep catching these fish because the water just keeps coming up more and more. Davey, real quick, I, 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 I have to go back in the logs of the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Bassmaster history. Are you not frighteningly close to where you won an event here on Lake Eufaula? You have a great memory, Mark Zona. I am uh, within sight of where I won my first Bassmaster Tournament in 1994. And i tell you a real quick story on that. I came here with my son about two years ago, the first time we had ever fished Lake Eufaula. He's stationed at Fort Bend here close by. And I pulled up on that spot and I made about five or six casts and I said, nah, this is not exactly the right feeling stuff. And finally I made a cast and felt the structure that I won that tournament on way back in 1994, and I said, there is the spot. And about that time, I had a bite and caught a four-pounder. It was just absolutely incredible, 20 years later. What a great story. Davey, thank you so much. We'll be leaning on you all day long. Davey was giving us so much he good stuff. He logged some yesterday. miles yesterday, He did. He burned friend. some gas up yesterday. Davey Hyde, who got his Hall of Famer career kind of kick-started right here all the way back in 1994. Hey, the tournament that we're in right now, this is a Davy Height style event. This is an yeah, event, so like I'm you just, look at again, what. Just trying to concentrate shallow here. You know, you may be thinking what, you know, why isn't he getting hung up in those, you know, in the grass, on the shoreline grass. Um, I'm just switching it up between a, just a, a punch rig, you know, Texas rig punch rig. It's a crawdad imitator, but it really represents these bluegill that around big old heavy tungsten weight. And that's a trocar hook that, um, that, you know, the hook point um, is inside the bait so it doesn't get caught up. Um, you know, then I'll switch it up and go with a swim jig, something like that right there. And I just swim that through the grass and it, you don't get caught up because of that weed guard right there. So, um, you know, you'd see on TV here, you know, why, is, why isn't this dude getting caught up? And I'd never throw my bobber rig or worm in there. 
but when it's weedless like this, you can throw it exactly where they live and just kind of put it in four wheel drive. And that's what gets these fish to bite. Talking about that. Down this, there around sin. This is, gosh, Todd Otten hooked up now. Oh. I could catch up with that sucker. He hit it so hard. Whoa, not a great big giant one, but look how skinny. Two and a half. Yeah, let's see. I had to give me four. Four anyway. He hit it good. Things have come to a screaming halt, man, for my school. I don't know, they never grouped up and uh, they're just kind of scattered, so I was picking them off. There was one little sweet spot, but they won't bite. I throw the swim bait there. They usually bump it about every cast and they're doing nothing right now. So either they scattered, because the last two fish I caught were up on the flat, like, you know, 20, 22 foot, and they'd been in 24. So that's all right, man. I got my five and we're gonna move on and try to get some some big bites somewhere. It's probably all right that they've stopped because I do need to go try to catch some big fish. I'm not sure where I'm gonna do that, but I got a couple ideas. <laughs> Some footage, okay. of course, from first thing this morning with Maybe Jamie Hartman. Well, he tries to assess the situation about his school and the lack of it here. right now. You you pointed this out, and I think there it bears repeating. Go. These are not the size schools you find on the Tennessee River this time of year. This is a different story on the Chattahoochee. No, it's kind of, you know, I know this sounds crazy to somebody at home that could be watching the Bassmasters for the first there. time, but oh, a lot of yes. times on the Tennessee River this time of year, <laughs> north of here, you can okay, find 50 to 100 fish schools that and sit is. on them all day long. Uh, a lot of the schools on this lake, number one, this lake has been very, very pressured the last 30 days. These are not unintelligent bass. Uh, the other side is a, a big school here right now seems to be five to six fish compared to one of those mega schools. Um, Chris Zaldane's a perfect example uh, only catching three off of his primary area this morning where he caught him yesterday. We got a new leader, Drew Benton. Wow. He's landed a three pounder. He's up to 15 and a half on the day. He's about uh, an ounce ahead of Jamie Herman. Okay. Drew Benton represents a lot of local knowledge here. His home lake, yes. just, just the next one down, Lake Seminole on the Chattahoochee. You know, and, and, and a lot of these anglers, like Drew Benton, we taught, we had him yesterday oh, on yes. Skype. Now we're cooking, um, baby really feel that this tournament by yes. the end of it even though our leader bill lowen uh, after day one was fishing shallow they really feel like by the end of the tournament that these deep water spots will be they're going to be the one that gets you to hold the trophy ray hanselman juniors are a big mover of the day he's got over 15 pounds he's up from 46th to eighth place. That's a move. I see that uh, last year's Angler of the Year has also moved into the top 10 at this point right now. So things are popping, which is exactly what we were expecting. And it will be happening all day long here on Fabulous Lake Eufaula here on the border between Alabama and Georgia, the Chattahoochee River. Drew Benton. His home water, Lake Seminole, just the next big stop down on this particular river, has moved into the leader. By an ounce, he is the leader over Jamie Hartman. Clark Winlet started in third, hanging tough, where he is a bulldog when he finds a, something that works for him. We'll see Clark and all the rest of them in action when we come right back on Bassmaster Live.
The DeWalt Passmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash, and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another $500 if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Bassmaster Sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50 at Bassmaster Classic Champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Basscat Sabre FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Stop number two on the regular season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is still two hours left to go in our morning session, a full three hours this afternoon. Tomorrow, the same story. We'll pick it up at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, bring you three hours with only 40 anglers left in the competition after today's cut. And then we'll have the afternoon session taking you all the way to that way in tomorrow, which will determine the 10 who will fish for the championship on Saturday. Drew Benton from just down the road, Lake Seminole guy. Sleeping in his own bed this week. Yeah, sleeping in his own bed. <laughs> Jamie Hartman in second place and Clark Winlet. We are not taking our eyes off the Clark Winlet. He is catching them so regularly. Good, solid ones all morning long. Exactly right. If you really looked at yesterday and the morning that Clark Wendelin has had. I mean, he has, he has set the hook of what seems like about every five minutes. And for somebody at home watching this, you know, you're looking at a guy that's catching a bass every five minutes and, and pressure will not get to Clark at all. No, Clark has been there. He has done this for two decades, more than two decades. Yeah. Um, and really you could tell after the weigh-in as much confidence I think that I've ever heard Clark Wendelin have going into the rest of an event. Carl was not, uh, Clark has not fished his whole career with a bass. He's one of the guys who made the FLW Tour. There's yes. no doubt about that. And uh, just a well-respected, and, and as you say, he's been there. He's done it all. He is impervious to prep. And, and looking at this right here, you see Kyle Monty. he's not fishing that boat dock. He's fishing brush around these boat docks. A lot of the, these, these brush piles have a lot of crappie in them. Clark said he could see the crappie on his screen.
three. Little guy. These things are buried in there. I didn't have to use but a couple of them yesterday. The little AccuCoal clips. These things are awesome. Look at that. They don't penetrate. And look how easy it is. I can put it on with one hand. Just like that. And it's, there's nothing for it to tangle up on. It doesn't penetrate the fish's mouth. It's awesome. It's hard to find those clips where you can put them on with one hand like that and take them off. I've had other ones before where you gotta use both hands and your legs. About, he hit it two or three times and finally got it. Just a little guy, skinny. Yeah, I got a bucket of those. It's gonna be fun when I go to coal. It's it's no limit fish. We got a couple veterans jumping in our top tent. Gary Klaus at seventh and Gerald Swindle at tenth with a decent fifteen plus bag. All right. You know you are on a lake that is on fire when they are catching them from one inch of water all the way out to 30 feet of water. Generally this time of year, it's an offshore deal. It's 15 feet of water to 25 foot, and that's, everybody's kind of doing the same thing in different parts of the lake. You are not seeing that on Lake Eufaula right now. Well, those are the kind we live for here on Bassmaster Live. That is, you know, it's the maximum entertainment. Well, we, we talked about your leader after day one, Bill Lowen, catching so many fish up shallow and a lot of times this time of year, when you're fishing offshore, your fish are very pale. They're, they're, they're white, they're, they're just their coloration, they're, they're pale from being deeper. And your shallow fish will be a lot darker that live in that vegetation. I thought the one thing that was amazing yesterday is the guys that were fishing shallow with the high water. One thing I think's happening in this tournament, I think it makes it such a unique event is, is that there's so many different patterns going on. I know guys are fishing shallow because I talk to them. I know guys are fishing in between depths because I am. And, and then I know guys, I talked to a few guys that are fishing out and fishing schools that are out. I mean, to me, that just like makes the, as a viewer, I'd be like, gosh, which way is gonna win this tournament? I mean, I mean, they're all catching them. They're all catching good fish. So it's pretty cool. You don't see it very often where multiple things can actually win. Are you having a telepathic conversation with Clark it Willett? Here? It's like I teed him up right there. You know, it's yeah, like the you volleyball. Did, you did. But what I was saying was, a lot of those bass yesterday that were caught shallow usually are really, really dark this time of year that live in that vegetation. And with this high water, we had a mayfly hatch. There's bluegill that are spawning shallow. A lot of those fish that were up shallow that Bill Lowen and other guys that were fishing shallow, they were pale which means a lot of those deeper fish were coming to the bank yesterday. If you looked at the pictures from the weigh-in on Bassmaster.com, there were very, very few really dark, dark shallow bass that were held up. That you would think were resident yes, shallow yes. water bass. Electronics. Now, the key is, is no matter what electronics you got, you know, I'm using Garmin LiveScope to find these brush piles, using my side view. Everybody's got different electronics. The thing is, is you've got to learn your electronics good enough to where you know what you're looking at. The keys are in the electronics. You can figure it out, but it takes time. It takes fishing. It takes, and especially with a guy like me, I'm used to, I mean, I'm an old school guy. I've been out here doing this for a long, long time. It's hard for me to want to depend on electronics, but hey, electronics are an advantage and you've got to be able to take advantage of any kind of advantage you got. Guys are just too good. And so, you know, the way I see it is, is that learn your electronics as good as you can. Let them work for you as hard as they can work. And, you know, hopefully it'll give you a few more fish. You know, it's all about efficiency. You know, back, back in the day, when I say the day 15, 20 years ago, I would have thought to myself, 
I, I can't compete on a brush pile tournament right on this lake because I don't know any, I don't know enough brush piles. And the thought that I've got to idle over those brush piles to find them, in other words, straight over it with my big motor, because that's the way electronics used to be. You didn't have anything looking out to the side or out in front of you. And I just thought, I can't be efficient enough doing that. I'm going to waste all, my whole day. You know, I think of all the brush piles I found in this tournament, I found a bunch. I find most of them on my side view. I mean, I'm seeing them out to the side. To think every once in a while I'll over one, but I just got lucky on that particular one. And so, you know, with all that being said, I didn't think you could, you know, I never fished that way because I just wasn't efficient enough at fishing. Now I can fish offshore because I can really be efficient. I can know where the brush piles are. I can see them. I can find enough. I mean, I'm just like I'm fishing docks out here, you know. Here's a dock, and I'm going to go up 50 yards. There's going to be another dock, and I'm going to go up 200 yards, and there's going to be another dock, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. Clark Winlet oh, on the good left. Sound, yeah, man. Yes, sir. Jamie Hartman on the right. How good is the competition? Look at that. A tie, an unofficial tie right now for second place, these two anglers. We talked about that yesterday so much, how these guys are finding these brush piles. They have, if you don't follow the Bass Masters, they have sonars, they have transducers on their boats that are looking under the water in front of them, off to the sides of them, to where traditionally, you know, a decade ago, your, your sonar is just looking oh, down and you're not as efficient. <sighs> Oh, it's good Freaking to note that they are uh, not allowed on the lake for a month before the tournament. Then they have three days of practice to scour the lake and figure My out where their fish are going to be. You can't right. tell. And they hit it so darn hard. A big one will hit it hard, and a little freaking spots will hit it hard. It is staggering how quickly you are able to dissect not a mile of Lake Eufaula with your electronics. By the end of the day, you can knock down 20 to 30 miles. Ugh. So if you look at that in a three-day span of Bassmaster practice, you can cover 50 miles of water with your electronics marking all of your spots. It's shocking to look at. It's the horribly detail. If it's you, if you've not seen boring. it, you've got to see it. Yeah. When you're practicing and just idle, it is incredibly boring. But, but a lot of our anglers, we talked about this yesterday, throughout three days of practice, say 12 to 15 hour days, they only fished four to six hours in three days. The rest of it big, was right there staring at your depth finder. That, that is exactly what he's doing right there, what he did throughout three full days of practice. To your point, Z, you're talking about earlier about the, the deeper fish coming up shallow. and. You know, that, Davy and you both explained, that's a function of rising water. And Davy, some key information this morning, it's still coming up. You know, I, I think it, it's a function of rising water. Generally, this time of year, those fish should be, man, they should be that 18 to 25 feet of water, traditional deep water. But w I think there's a combination. You have the rising water and you have a lake that the last three weeks, you can't stress this enough, has had so much tournament pressure. Those fish just get tired of it and move. Saldane back out deep again. There's one. Oh, dig it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh-oh, that one was hooked, hooked good. Look at the size of that spoon. Crap. Oh, that is a hubcap. Mm -hmm. Chris Aldane getting it going out deep again. He, he's going to mix it up today. He said so. He thinks he knows what to do all day long. So we'll follow him, see what happens. Drew Benton on top. And look at that tie for second place. Wentland Hartman, great competition. Just look at the whole top 10 there. They're all within four or five pounds of each other. And it's going to be moving all day long. We've got some great Bassmaster live action today on the second day of this Elite Series event. And we'll be right back. The DeWalt Fastmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota.
trail gets rough and the mud gets deep, you'll find a Toyota Tacoma. It's the best-selling compact pickup in America for 12 years. And it's not because we baby them. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Denny Brower needs 19 pounds. Denny Brower, 19 pounds. We talked about Bill Lowe and our leader to start the and day, and we talked about his mentor. Yes. One of the people who really influenced him as far as his shallow water fishing. It was this guy right here, one of the winningest of all time, the legend, Denny Brower. And Two victories right here on Lake Eufaula, 2002 and 2004, for this great, great angler. One of the superstars, the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, and I can promise you if he was in this event, if he's watching this event, he is, number one, pulling for his buddy, Bill Lowen, and you would not see him out deep fishing with no. his electron. I have fished with ben Denny Brown. <laughs> I've been privileged. He's not so much about that game. No, no, no. no, no he no. will not he, play that he game. He knows his strengths. And, about and, <laughs> three foot of water is deep for him. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Nothing to prove out yes. deep. Man, getting the work done shallow, and that's what Bill Lowen has in mind for today. We will keep our eye on him all day long. But now we have a new leader what? in our tournament. Have had for the last 30, 45 minutes. About as close as you get to a local here. He's from the next lake down, Lake Seminole. Drew Benton and a B&W trailer hitches on the line. Feature there for you is. right now. We've dialed him up. There's Drew Benton right now. And Drew, uh, thanks for letting us uh, uh, interrupt your fishing this morning. But tell it, you know, you've seen this lake in every condition, every time of year. Is this one of your favorite times to fish here at Eufaula? Is this, is this one a guy like you can really do some damage? Obviously. Absolutely not. <laughs> not? Okay. I no, this is not my time of year. I, I was really licking my chops on it was going to be in April, and um, I practiced a ton for an April event, but this is my time of year, and actually, I smoked something first thing this morning, so my lower unit is knocking all kinds of bad, so I'm just kind of limping around right now, taking what I can get. Drew, were you fairly blown away after the weigh-in yesterday from the weights that were put on the scale? Absolutely. It, uh... I never saw that coming. I was joking. Brock Mosley texted me before the the tournament and asked me what the cut weight was, and I said, ah, 34 to 35, and I was joking. <laughs> but, but it looks like that might be the case. I, I, this lake is probably the best lake in Alabama right now. It's, it's kind of flew under the radar, um, I feel like, and that's what makes it so good. There's a, just a ton of three pounders. I've got like 15 or 16 pounds and I haven't even got to hit anything good because I'm afraid that I'm gonna not make it. So I'm just kind of limping around seeing what I can do, but uh, we're making the best of it. Well, good luck with that and yes, good luck sir. with the rest of your day. I'm, I'm sorry you got a little difficulty, but thanks for yesterday and today letting us uh, join Drew Benton for a few minutes out there on the water. That's fun when we can get to Drop in on the leader, a little bit unexpected there. Let me guess, Clark Wendelin has caught another bass. Uh, you think? Right. Well, be a good guess. <laughs> right.
guess we'll find out. See him looking at his electronics right there. Every cast he's making is just absolutely precise to where those subsurface piles are at. The other thing that's different is, is that when you're in the four box, well, sometimes one guy will be talking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's best and he that, got interrupted. And that one guy is you. <laughs> no. I don't think he'll help any. Fishing terms, he is dialed in right but, now. But it's a nice fish. We're on the live mix. It's just awesome, really good. Smaller today. So, the object is to catch the biggest bass. It's fun catching them, but these are not the ones we're gonna need today. Brandon Lester with a three and a half pounder has jumped into top ten. Oh, big Nancy. Coming back here. Come on. Come on. Ah, look how skinny. But it's a bite. It is a bite. All they gotta do is just keep on biting. That's his best fish of the day, put him back in the top 10. I gotta slow down, I'm just fishing. Way too fast, you know what I mean? It's like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. It's like, no, you gotta slow down and fish. This stretch right here, where these long points come running out, that was the really good spot yesterday. Miles and miles of this willow weed, gator grass, and this vegetation is just part of the part of the allure of this incredible place. It's been kind of silent this morning. And one thing that's not made me so happy, but the screen of knowledge. The, yeah, well, yeah, exactly the, and the right. operator of the screen of knowledge, Ronnie Moore. You come in early. You do a lot of hard work in the setup show, Facebook Live, and we don't hear from you. So let's get the knowledge. Nailed flowing. it yesterday. Well, yes, it's, it's probably best for the fans if they don't hear from me because the guys are catching them so good out on the water. So we've been seeing a lot of action there. But when it comes to Rapala Fantasy Fishing, uh, it's it's interesting how it's playing out. We talked about all the anglers that were heavy picked and we'll get into that later uh, revisiting how they've done in the event but I wanted to talk about the bonus points aspect of it and two guys that were watching that have some major boner bonus points uh, locked down for fantasy fishing Bill Lowen sitting there 4.9 percent ownership 4.9 percent Mike Huff less than one percent of fantasy fishing players picked him but they are locking down some big uh, bonus points 40 points if you have the biggest bag of the event which is Bill Lowen because he's the leader 40 points if you have the biggest bass of the event, which is Mike Huff, a six pound, 12 ounce of right suit. Six pounds, 12 ounces. Yes, sir. And then Phoenix if you folks. are the leader, you get five points daily 
for leading. So Bill Lowen right now is sitting on top, biggest bag, leader points. He's getting all kinds of bonus points. Let's pull the curtain back. How would you grade yourself yesterday in Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing? It was pretty solid. We had I had a 14th place, like a mid 20s. I had a 40th, you know, whatnot. But it wasn't it wasn't stellar. You're but in we're the game. Better. Yes. Hey, for folks joining us, ESPN2, Bassmaster.com, join the conversation. If you're watching for the first time, tell us what you're learning about bass fishing. Hashtag Bass Live on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere else. Get in there with Ronnie Moore on Twitter. Exactly. Yeah, just get it going. Why I'm not? I'm going to tell you, the screen of knowledge, he has nailed. He has stuck Ab the landing absolutely. for a day and a half straight. It's an essential. It's essential yeah. viewing. It we, we lean on it so hard here. Drew Benton, we just talked to him a few minutes ago, kind of limping around, he says, but limping around with a lead. We've got so much more on the way. Plenty of time left in our morning session on Bassmaster Live, Tommy. Yes. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Setting the standard. Let's see. First Bassbo, first U.S. Coast Guard approved Bassbo, first Behold Pack Design, largest owners tournament, great fish and wind program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite Bassbo. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options, leaving nothing left to desire. So, yes, yes, we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. The season is starting and it's time for you to bring it. Pit your knowledge against friends and fans everywhere in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. It's free and it starts by signing up. Then pick your five angler team for each event. Grand prize winner gets a Bass Pro Shop shopping spree, cash and Rapala prize pack. Plus new opportunities including $4,000 worth of prizes for each individual event winner. Plus another $500 if you're a Bass member. Total value for the season is $90,000. Sign up today and start bringing it at BassmasterFantasy.com. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Humminbird, Mercury, Minn Kota, and by Talon. How great is it to have some live bass fishing at the very highest level on one, one of the most amazing lakes of all time tonight? The entertainment oh. prospects are not too shabby either, Mark Zona. We're back tonight. Top-ranked featherweight contender Jesse Magdaleno on the left there, taking on Yennefel Vicente, who's only 11-1 and one with 11 knockouts in his last 12 fights. That is the main event bout tonight. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific right here on ESPN, the ESPN app, and ESPN Deportes. I think you know exactly where I lie on that bout oh, tonight. Oh, you made yes, it quite clear I am yesterday. In no pun intended. I am in Jesse Magdaleno's corner. He is the Las Vegas kid. 66-inch reach southpaw from Vegas. And here's what I'm going to tell you. It's not even going to be about oh. my friend. All right. Okay? Jesse Magdaleno is like, it, 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 literally, he's like 77 and 0. Okay? 
Well, I, I got to hand it. You know this guy chapter and verse. I, I'm going I'm to trust your judgment I've there. Studied, I'm watch the fight, I've though. studied boxing the last three months. Trust me. Well, the reason we have a fight is because there's a possibility of another outcome. And I, I, think, it, I think we can look at that and get you're, all you're, fired up for that you're fight. You're not in the same corner as much. Not as, not as much you're as not you. As much. Not as much as you. No, sir. Did the Zona so. kids go at it at home during the... Quarantine or what? I, I wouldn't say the zone of kids were the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Boy, you talk about Come a on, great week for an angler now, uh, Chris Zaldane. Yeah, baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. Taking a look at coverage from yesterday morning. Big, we are big back. early morning flurry. Oh, I'll stay on there. Welcome back, baby. Quarantine is over, and we're catching giants out here on Lake Eufaula. Bassmaster Live, ESPN2. I see you. I see you. Oh, gosh, did it come off? Yeah! And I broke my rod. Woo! High sticking penalty. Got a high sticking penalty right there, baby. Yeah! I, he was a bit of a hot mess yeah. yesterday for a while. What, is that I, I still, I still don't huh? believe that that last big fish. You don't need to it's even player watch yeah. bass fishing to know what a hot mess is. <laughs> and real quick, this morning, just watch Go what transpires here in the first 15 minutes. Yeah! Shh. <laughs> He's being sneaky. <laughs> Hold on, we got standby. We got boats coming by. My floor's wet, carpet's wet. It's good. <laughs> That's a giant right there. Yeah! -hoo -hoo! That's a big old you fall a bass right there. Woo! It's it's <laughs> phenomenal being sneaky. Laying low, trying to, <laughs> and then exploding. <laughs> Keeping okay. it on the down low with the volume turned up to 11. It's making it all happen right there. <laughs> running deep, not running silent. A little bit of history on the spot that, from yesterday morning and right here. Little dude, I saw that one on the graph. Oh. Don't think that'll keep. No, oh, maybe it will. Just a little baby 14 incher. It's not one you want to take to the lot to the way in later today, but Little thing about that spot he's fishing. We've got a guy, a local guy, we talked about him yesterday, Joe water. Durham. Yeah. Wins a lot of tournaments, gives us a lot of information yeah. about Lake Eufaula. He said Chris Aldane is fishing a spot that was good like 20 years ago. He said, granted, it'll be a lot more popular again after this tournament, but not a lot of brush on it, just a little shell bar, has a lot of spawning bluegill on it. Very, very featureless spot compared to guys like Clark Wendland. You know, we've had a good morning. We just hadn't caught very many good ones. Caught one, you know, a little over four. You know, one thing that happened, I've noticed three days of practice yesterday in the tournament, there's a lull during the day. And I've not been able to say, oh, it's between 9 and 11 or it's 10 and 12, but mid-morning seems kind of like that time when it's just, I mean, for whatever reason, they're not biting. A lot of times, you know, I'm fishing brush piles. A lot of times those fish will be down you know, I, all I got to do is get it near the brush pile. Fish come out there and he'll bite it. A lot of times the first cast, but one of the first few casts anyway. And then, but then sometimes when it's, you know, like I start getting this feel that they're just not biting very good. You know, you fish five piles in a row or something and don't, don't catch one. Well, what I start thinking then is, is, hey, they're not biting. And what seems to happen is, is you got to get your bait in the middle of that brush pile. And then they're still awful hard to catch. It's, it's not... You know, like, I, and I lose a lot of them because I'll be way down in the bottom of it, be sitting there hopping it, one will grab it. I've got a huge pile to have to come up out of, and there's lots of limbs and everything, and it's just hard to get them out of there a lot of times. And so, um, you know, it, it's just, 
fish don't bite all the time. I mean, if, if we could fish only when they're biting, that'd be awesome. But part of it is out here is, is that you've got to figure out how to catch some during the lull and do really well when they're biting. Okay, now Clark Winlet, most of it today with the big 10 inch worm. Yeah. Well, most of the guys, I, I think it's safe to say that we've seen fishing deep utilizing that. Now we see Chris Saldane with that giant spoon. Now what's the, what is, what's the pluses and minuses? Where Chris Saldane's at, it's a lot more featureless. There's a lot less brush to get hung up in. The other thing is guys like Clark Wendelin, he'll tell you that 10 inch Texas rig weedless plastic worm is a high percentage bait. When you get bit, your chance of landing that fish is nine out of 10 to where, you know, you see Chris Aldane throwing that big spoon. It looks like a hubcap. There's a lot of weight that can throw that spoon out where you can lose that bass. The other thing is I asked Clark, I said, are you catching on anything else besides the 10 inch worm? And he said, you know, I can get a bite on a swim bait, but I don't want to draw fish out of a brush pile. Okay. When you throw a swim bait, you're imitating a shad, a shiner or a bluegill and you're reeling it through those brush piles and you're drawing those fish out of the cover. He said, I would rather throw a bait in there, catch one, throw back and hopefully catch another instead of draw pulling them out of the cover. It's Clark Wendell right now to me. It's, it's he's the Jesse imagine. Magdalena you know, of this the tournament. At home, what you're <laughs> okay, saying on this all right, fair. Yeah. So we'll keep on that thing. It doesn't make much sense. Yeah, you know, well, he's like one of the several PBC, bass anglers who some have. Some of it's uh, just trees. Some of it's Christmas trees. Um, there's brush usually planted around docks. I mean, there's brush all over this lake. And a lot of times, when I'm just idling, I don't even know. You know, I might idle 75 yards, a place that I've not idled. I'm looking out to the side with my side view the whole time. I'll see a brush pile, I'll just turn around and fish it. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like going and fishing that dock or fishing that tree over on the bank. And see these right here, these, that's just pole trees that are just laying on the bottom. They're bo on both sides of me right now. But I don't really want that. I want somebody, a brush pile somebody set that sits up higher. I'm gonna run just a little ways. Come on now, that gone. I know the wind ain't right, but come on. Got to be a couple of these in there. Taking a look at Bill Lowen up fishing shallow. He will live there, he said, the entire event. But the talk of the day definitely has been brush. And there's really, we talked about this yesterday, there's two different kinds, and this right here is an image uh, not really what the guys are concentrating on. You're looking at the bottom of Lake Eufaula right there. This is an image of what guys like Clark Wendelin are, are really hunting for. And this is a down imaging scan that we actually received from Humminbird. And it shows the branches coming off of the bottom. You see a big pile of bait right here with individual fish underneath them. And here's the thing is, some of these brush piles that Clark Wendelin's concentrating on, they're small, they're, they're five to 10 feet in radius, but some of them are absolutely gigantic. But the other side is these brush piles in this tournament so far, really, if you look at this image, it's a great image of what they're hunting for. A lot of these areas are only holding one, two or three bass at a time. There are places that like we saw Brandon Lester fishing 30, 40 different brush piles, hoping to catch two or three off each of them and keep running and gunning after that. And, and that's really throughout this entire tournament so far looking at this, uh, this is an actual brush pile from Lake Eufaula, is Clark Wendelin said, it is a law of average. If I find a hundred of these and could knock down, if I could fish 50 of them a day, guaranteed throughout eight hours of fishing, 
I will catch five big ones off of a brush pile like this. Good stuff. Thank you, guys. And sort of amplifying what Clark was talking about. And boy, we look at the fish catching this boat. Yesterday was great. Yesterday was fantastic. Today's I think, better. I think it's even better. Today's Absolutely. better. Absolutely. And, and no less than our leader, who pretty much knows this lake backwards and forwards, said, it is shocking how well these guys are doing here. 15 limits over 20 pounds uh, in yesterday's weigh-in. What will happen at today's weigh-in? Well, we're getting closer, but plenty of time left to come yet this morning on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new Tour Grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about. In the wild, nature dictates that when it's time to eat, animals will instinctively find and devour the meal that satisfies them most. In the water, Berkeley Powerbait's scientifically proven formula triggers the natural predatory instinct in bass. Now available in a plethora of shapes, sizes, and colors. Berkeley Powerbait. Fish bite and won't let go. You're watching the DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Started the season 2020 Bassmaster Elite season way back in February, way down in Florida on the, the, the fantastic, uh, fantastic main waterway, the St. John's River there in the state of Florida. It's been a good long time since we have resumed the season, but man, we are back and blowing and going on this second day of competition. I would have thought the St. John's was gonna be a uh, slugfest like it was a year ago and that this tournament might be a little bit of a grinder not it is not the case no no, 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 no how else to even put it it's a blowout man they, they are knocking them dead out there today look at the battle for second place look at that tie right there 36 pounds and four ounces for both clark wenland and jamie hartman i mean blow for blow these guys have been slugging it out absolutely right jamie hartman kind of living off of one primary area this morning but it has been the clark wenland show really for the last three hours oh, of yes. day two of competition now we're cooking, baby yes Jamie Hartman, like Clark Winlet, a reputation as a guy. Once he gets dialed into a spot, he can absolutely exploit it to the fullest. He will clean a place out for you. There's nothing wrong with that fish. That's just. Boy, there's our guy. Oh my gosh! Yeah, one one ounce separating those three right there. And Drew Benton doing all his work with the mechanical issues today. So having a bit of a handicap, he'll have to get that scene too. 
fixed up at the end of the day unless things get uh, to the point where he just can't move around at all. So uh, keeping an eye on Drew Benton. Just said he hit something early this morning. There's a lot of pole timber in Lake Eufaula. Said he's just not able to get around as quickly uh, as he would definitely like and just trying to salvage the day. Back out on the water right now with, well, yet again, Clark Wendelin. So you see him stare down at his electronics right there. And that those electronics are looking in front of his boat where he's throwing at individual brush piles and really dissecting left, the perimeter, left side, right side, and then the heart of it. And he said he'll only cast at a brush pile generally three to five times, and then he's moving on to the next one. Explain the angle of approach. How do you want to be hitting in between branches over them? You see him right there, he's hung in the pile, but But it's all different. Generally, you want to catch them off of the perimeter just so you can get them away from the brush pile and not get hung up. Generally, your last cast, a lot of times, you want it in the meat, right in the center. Being hung up is about the only time Clark Winlet has stopped catching fish as we've gone through this morning. I mean, he has been on all day long. Yeah, and, and what's been what was really cool after the weigh-in, he was with Dave Mercer on stage yesterday, a phenomenal weigh-in. It was a little different yeah. with the social distancing sure. that yeah. we had on stage than a usual Fastmaster weigh-in. Went fantastic. Great job by Mercer and yep. Trip Weldon, our tournament oh, yeah. director. Um, but I asked Clark, a lot of, of our anglers that are fishing offshore for these deeper bass, I, I, they're on the main lake. They're not up in creeks, right? Mm -hmm. They're fishing in notorious summertime areas. I asked Clark, I said, are you really concentrating on main lake? He said, no. Anywhere I can find a certain depth brush pile, which is eight to about 12 to 15 feet of water, shallower, than the rest of our contingency that's fishing offshore. He said, I could be in a creek, in a pocket, main lake, no. and I feel like I can catch him out of every single one of them. I feel healthy. Saw Kyle Monty caught his first two fish and then went for a good long spell, I'd say an hour and a half before he caught fish number three. We just saw that about. 25 minutes ago. He was a little worried about some company in his area. He was. I, I think Dang, Clark's I must have followed my crankbait up there all underneath the boat. I think Clark's starting to want to want to get in that Sports Center top 10 today, is what I'm seeing. <laughs> was, That's what I'm seeing. He's making a good campaign for it. You know what he has in common with uh, Denny Brower? Clark Winlet does? Yeah. What? They both adorned their images on uh, cereal boxes. That's on right. Kellogg's box. <laughs> yeah. Right? Corn flakes, mini wheat. Better one. Maybe. Yep. Yep. Not a big one, but a nice one. Long and skinny. Number five. Decent one. Got caught before. Quite three pounds. Limit for Kyle Monty today. Great limit yesterday, almost 23 pounds. Honestly, Four. I don't know why he lives in the state of Florida because every say that. time he's in the top five, he's fishing offshore brush. So. You actually called him out on that, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> Move, son. Guide from Lake Okeechobee, Florida. He Much got, different lake than this. He got to fish with Randy Moss the other day. He did. What? He did. Wow. Well, you did a story on that. I did a story on it. Yeah, just real gently, just falling down and then jerk it up, let it fall down, hits the bottom, up, 
And as it flutters and spins, it, they hammer it. Gosh, I just lost a good one. Talk about how the sun shines. Yeah, so sunshine really, um, it's like us. We can't be out in the sun too long. You know, when we're on the beach um, in the hot summer like this, you know, we go for the shade. We go for that umbrella. We go for cover. And they're the exact same way. I mean, fish don't have eyelids, so they're always trying to get around things, you know, around. Um, they don't have eyelids or sunglasses, so they're always trying to get around cover that they can hide under and get under and take a break from the, from the sun. So on this place right now, it's standing timber. There's a bunch of underwater timber. It's brush piles. It's uh, shell bars and rocks they could tuck in behind or docks. Or like yesterday, that flip fish I had over the dock. I mean, it was a nice little canopy over their head. They get out of the, you know, the sunlight. So, you know, you throw that this flutter spoon down in there, and you just get a lot of flash and just twirl and vibration, and it triggers something in them that hey, I got to kill this. It looks like a dying bait fish, and that's where we step in as fishermen. That's you know, that's their vulnerability. They got to get it. And that's why there's so many different loop bass lures on the market, the bass fishing market. You know, you walk into, you know, the sporting goods store, you go on Amazon and, and you look at fishing lures, there's all kinds of different ones and each and every one has its own application in, in every condition. So this week for me, it's just a big metal spoon and it doesn't work everywhere. You know, you take it down to your little bass pond, you know, it really doesn't work down there, but out here on these river systems like this, when the big bass are chasing larger than normal bait fish, big gizzard shad or big shad, it works perfectly. I'm kind of excited, man. I, I graphed over that spot and I saw about seven of them on it. I cast it in there and I hooked one, lost it, and then the next jerk up, I hooked another one, lost it. So it tells me they're just moving around. There's a high spot here, there's a high spot there, a little drop up there, brush pile out there. June is a transition month where they transition from the bank out in the main river current where they got plenty of oxygen, where most of the ecosystem, you know, the uh, most of the life is living out deep. Bait fish, bluegill, big bass, stripers, catfish out there in the channel. Everything just kind of lives out there. It's because the water's a little cooler. Again, we're in South Alabama. It's so hot here in the summertime. They like that cool underwater current around brush piles and shade. So we use our electronics to find that stuff. We drop waypoints on it and set up the trolling motor, hit spot lock on the trolling motor, make repetitive casts to that spot. And some of us are fortunate enough to get paid to do it. <laughs> Pretty fortunate. Well, Chris Aldane, not going through numbers like Clark Winlet is, but boy, his big ones are prodigious. Uh, and that's been the case both yesterday and today. This is the second day of this tournament on Lake Eufaula. And again, our 86 anglers one thing in mind, make it into the top 40 at the end of the weigh-in so you can fish tomorrow and possibly get a chance on fishing Saturday. You're getting a really good look at, we talk about all these guys fishing offshore and using their electronics. Bill Lowen, that is a really good look at what he's concentrating on. You notice how that grass bed to the right of him kind of protrudes out from the bank. He said he was using his mapping. All, their electronics have actual underwater contour mapping cards. He has a Lake Master mapping card. He said, wherever deeper water would cut into that grass, really any spot that he found like that yesterday between nine o'clock and three o'clock would have bigger bass. We're yet to see that today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stay on there. Yeah! Yeah! That is a big one. That is a, that big, is a big one. <laughs> Just a great and, catch. And I mean, swung it. Oh, right? right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like it was, like he's trying to hit somebody with an umbrella. Excellent stuff. Wow. Leaderboard.
pretty much the same. Still that tie between Clark Winland and Jamie Hartman. For second place, both of them one ounce behind, according to Bass Track. Our leader, Drew Benton. Drew Benton uh, won three years ago in a very different place, Lake Travis in Austin, Texas. Clark Winlet is from Austin, Texas. Not overlook a John Cox kind of creeping around oh, in the top Oh, yeah, 10. there we go. That's right? going to be some little bit of shallow action there, quite possibly. We won't know till we see him, and we'll try to run him down. More to come on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories. Fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run. For life, they know reliability starts here. Pre-collision system, standard, on the 2020 Tacoma, so you can go from one epic playground to the next. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Got another hour in our morning session of Bassmaster Live. Later today, great entertainment right here on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. The Major League Baseball Draft continuing rounds two through five, starting at five Eastern, two Pacific. Again, only five rounds this year for obvious reasons. A little bit different situation this year. Carl Ravitch hosting from our Bristol Studios alongside MLB insider and draft expert Kylie McDaniel. Remote contributions from Chris Burke, Jess Mendoza, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, and Jeff Passan. That is today. Baseball, of course, Mark Zona is the yes. national pastime. Yes. The local pastime here in Eufaula, Alabama, is setting out brush piles That's in the lake so is. you can fish for largemouth bass. That's right. Getting after it, putting out brush piles. <laughs> Drew Benton right. from just down the road. The uh, Seminole, Lake Seminole is the next uh, big lake down here on the Chattahoochee River, and he finds himself in the lead right now. He's uh, got a few uh, issues he's dealing with today. Clark Winlet, Jamie Hartman right behind him, one ounce behind in a tie. Estimated, of course, these are all Bass Track numbers, uh, not official until we get there, but what a, what a fight. What Kyle, a dog fight. Kyle Welcher down in 10th place. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ronnie. A former professional poker player. Well, I think I don't think he has to retire from that to fish. Just still going to do that. He still, he still probably gambles for a living. <laughs> Got our hummingbird lay of the lake showing all of our anglers, all 86 of them, the way they are spread out along the 85 miles of Lake Eufaula. Yeah, and he really hears what you get from this hummingbird lay of the lake. Uh, you know when this, especially this time of year, you are on a very, very healthy body of water when the entire 86-man field is spread 
throughout 85 miles. A lot of times this time of year, these lakes are, are a lot more condensed where the bite is really happening. You'll see the majority of the field in a 20 mile stretch. That is not the case. Our field spread all throughout Lake Eufaula so far in this event. Again, that's the kind of event we live for. And as Clark Winlet pointed out earlier, the other thing that makes them so special is like this one, the great events have people doing all sorts of different things, different approaches. Chris Grow, about as far as you can go up river, fishing around River Bend, that was thought to be potentially a major player, shallow for this event. nice fish but just a two pounder I don't need to check him but just look at my situation back here all right Clark I'm not gonna keep that fish right there boy he's been going through big numbers of fish today he's Clark. a highlight package he is a human highlight package a live he's, highlight package <laughs> he's a two-legged highlight package that's what he is of course, uh, he's still chasing this guy right here. He's not got much of a deficit, only one ounce, but Drew Benton is the leader, and our man, Davey Height, is on Drew Benton. And Davey, what can you tell us about what Drew Benton's got going on here? Well, very similar to what we're seeing Clark Winlet do. He's fishing brush piles, but I think the key that Drew Benton and Clark Winlet have over some of these anglers, they've really dialed in on the depth range that those brush piles need to be in. You know, the, a lot of these guys is the first time they've ever fished Eufaula with only three days of practice. And everyone knows that the Lake Eufaula is famous for brush piles. And, and they graft around and found a lot of brush piles, but some of them shallow, some of them deep. And you know, a, a lot of guys I talked to said, I found 30 or 40, maybe even 50 brush piles. But a lot of those piles are out there in 15, even 20 feet of water. And it seems with this rise in water, like we've seen guys catch them in the water willow and the gator grass, that sort of thing. But the ones that aren't all the way up on the bank seem to be on these shallower brush piles. And it's one thing that's, that's also very common with Clark and Drew. They're not close to the drops as much as you would think. They're up on these expansive flats. And I think it's because those fish are moving in shallower because this lake just keeps backing up. A lot of water coming in and they're not generating, not pulling any out. It's up about six inches from yesterday this time, about five or six inches. And those fish that are out on those main channels close to those breaks are migrating in and they stop on these brush piles especially we got virtually no clouds today yesterday we had a, a low ceiling a lot of cloud cover but today those fish instead of roaming around on those flats they want to get up on something get get around a brush pile or up in that vegetation or shallow so i think the brush piles are a key but the depth range is even a bigger key those fish aren't out on those deeper piles they're on the shallower ones Davey, we're taking a look right now at, at the track of some of the fish catches from Drew Benton. And really, you talk about the featureless fl shallower flats from 5 to, say, 12 feet of water. The brush pile acts kind of like an oasis, a stopping point. But one of the common themes is every one of the guys that has been really productive have said the key brush piles have been loaded with crappie and bluegill. Kind of explain the dynamic that comes together on those shallower piles when those crappie and bluegill, especially the bluegill, start to spawn around them. Yeah, those... Those shallower ones that the bluegill are spawning around, those are the, the real shallow ones on up there in about five, six, seven foot depth range. And those bluegill, they need cover also for protection because if they're just out in the, in the middle of the desert, so to speak, on a big expansive flat with no cover around them, then they're not gonna last very long on Lake Eufaula because there's a lot of bass, a lot of uh, hybrids and those sort of things. So they wanna gather around that cover. So those largemouth live in those same places. And, and we've all seen it in real clear water situations, not only with your electronics, but visually you can see, you'll see a piece of cover and there may be 20 or 30 bluegill around that piece of cover. And there could be a four or five pound largemouth right there. 
but to get these fish to trigger, and that's what these guys are doing with the Texas rig worm, that sort of thing, they're bumping in these brush that, that actually scatter the bluegill around, and those bass react to them when they're not necessarily feeding right then, because there's always bait around. This is like you follow. There's, there's shad everywhere, there's bluegill, there's crappie, that sort of thing. But to trigger those fish, to bump that brush pile, to hit that limb, and trigger a reaction strike from those fish. Hey, Davey, let's pull the curtain back here. right now. Yes. Magdaleno or Vicente tonight on ESPN? Who do you have? Big plug. Thank you. <laughs> v Vicente. Wow. Vicente. Well, All I right. See, there we go. There's a difference in opinion. I don't know any of you a straight answer. Usually I kind of yeah. waffle back and forth. <laughs> That's what generates action, that different that difference of opinion. Hey, Davey, Mark Zone appointed this out. He said this this today. And this week just looks like a Davy hype sort of yes. setup. Setup week. If you were out there working over those brush piles, we've seen Clark and mo more of our anglers with the big 10 inch worm. We've seen also the giant spoon for Chris Saldane. What would you be working them over with? A jig. Oh, I would be throwing a big worm, no doubt about it. Maybe a, a six or seven inch Cinco, something like that. And uh, a spinnerbait, old school spinnerbait. I, you know, I won that tournament way back in 1994 on a one ounce spinnerbait here. I would certainly be throwing a, a big soft plastic like a Cinco and then a, a spinnerbait, no doubt about it. Well, you're, you're, you're the best angler ever to fish in May, but May came <laughs> this It's really like May weather here because May was like more like uh, April, right? He said he doesn't like June. <laughs> the great Davey Hyde out there. Yeah. Davey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Davey. Hi, Davey, uh, with Drew Benton out there. And, uh, man, so much to learn from Davey out there. He's certainly put in his hours on the lake and gotten great, great results. Hey, Kyle Monty, while we were talking to Davey, I put a Good one. Looked like a good one in the boat. Chad Pipkins with a four and a half pounder pulls within two ounces of the lead. Yes. You know, and this is moments ago too. with Kyle Monty. It's one of the biggest crankbait fish we yeah, thought hook. that thought yeah, crankbait was going to be a big hook. player. And it has not been so far in this tournament. Big one for Kyle Monty. Come on, baby. Cut it out. Look like a three or four pounder. Got one hook. Get in here. Yes. Yes. A big plug. Thank you, Jake Whitaker. Let me borrow that plug. Well, we just caught our biggest of the day and started running some stuff off the bank here. So it gives me a little bit of confidence. There's not, not much of this that I feel like I could sit on very well today with the wind. Um, so I'm just gonna pick some brush piles that I feel like I could sit on. Doesn't look like anybody's running those down there, but that's one of the right ones right there. I mean, that was a, that was close to four pounds, I think. And that's what you gotta have here. Thrilled to be out here, having a blast catching these fish. Everybody back home is excited because they get to watch me today. I'm excited because this place is full of big ones. And that right there was fun. I like the way he's thinking there, Kyle Monty. Seeing unlimited potential here in Lake Eufaula. It's just so fun to visit a new place, a place we've never been. Bassmaster Elite Series, Kyle hadn't been here before. Clark has been here before, and he learned not to fish shallow, apparently. That was the lesson That's he learned. He, oh, she's hooked up again. <laughs> I thought he was bigger than that. Hang on, dude. Mm. That one won't keep. Doing a lot with a lot. A lot of areas and a lot of bites. More bites than we've seen by far 
from anybody else we've had a camera with. Just phenomenal. So different from what, what many of the others are doing out here or at least getting a different outcome that others are getting, maybe doing the same sort of thing. Chad Pipkin's moving now up, up the leaderboard, up and up, all the way into fourth place. Tucked in behind Jamie Hartman by an ounce of Hartman and Wendland. So we have, the battle is joined here on day number two of this DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula. We'll be back with more on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. I travel the country on the Bassmaster Elite Series. I simply can't let the weather be the reason I don't win $100,000. That's why I use AFCO clothing to keep me warm, dry, and protected from whatever Mother Nature wants to throw at me. My season depends on it. My career depends on it. AFCO, any fish, any water. When I'm on the road for work or for fun, I always like to have a reliable generator around. This open frame inverter from Champion is ideal because it's lighter than a standard open frame generator and more affordable than a traditional inverter. The remote start helps me start up the generator or shut it off without having to leave my camper. It provides essential power for things like charging my boat batteries, also makes life a lot more comfortable for myself and my family. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Into the final hour of our morning session here. Love for Fort Worth, that's what the sign says. That's what the, the word is on the street because the 2021 World Championship of Fishing is gonna be in Fort Worth as the host city, Lake Ray Roberts. It's the fishery on the Trinity River. Some great, great prospects for that one. What a great sports town is Fort Worth. Great facility, the brand new Dickies, Dickies Arena. Just an unbelievable prospect, and everyone is looking forward to this one. Ray Roberts, that time of year, should be great, should be cranking out some big ones. And the three days of fishing will be superb. Texas is the place to be that time of year. Oh, no doubt. No kid, no kid. Looking forward to that so much. Mm, Alabama, you fall up specifically, may well be the place to be. We think it is because this morning, exactly. you know, we've, we've only for the last few years been able to provide live all day fishing because of technology. We can do it now before you just see a compressed one hour version of a tournament and, and, and we do the live. So you, you get sort of a revelation is how long people go between strikes. This looks like one of these one hour fishing shows today. Yes. They're catching them one after the other. Yeah, it, it's been like yesterday. We kind of throw darts on who we think who's gonna catch them and stuff like that. But from days two on to the end of the event, we're with the leaders and it has been a beat down all day long. Beat down started early today with a giant fish for Chris Aldane offshore. Somewhere around six and a half, between six and a half and seven pounds. To switch locations here, I'm kind of checking brush piles right now and what these are they're just angler place brush piles where you know this is such a big fishing community here you know anglers will actually you know take brush off the bank whether it be a Christmas tree or a you know a, a tree out in their yard cut it down and then come out here and place it on these high spots out here and it creates an awesome summertime bass fishing location the problem is only they know about them, you know, and, and uh, without electronics, you can't really find them. 
and we're not allowed to receive any information leading up to the event, so you can't just go to the local bait store and say, hey, you know, where are those brush piles? You can't do that. So you got to put in the time and idle around and kind of look for these brush piles. And if they're holding fish, if they've been there for a while and they're holding fish, you're able to pinpoint them and make that right cast and, and catch, a, catch a few. I'm able to look 360 degrees around the boat with these electronics here. So I see every single little, these ones actually look like Christmas trees. But it, well, Chris L. Dane out there doing as usual a great job. I mean, you talk about a straight A student of the sport of bass yes. fishing. He is that guy. Teacher. It's a teacher. Teacher. Yeah. Student, yeah. A teacher. He, he can execute Chad, Chad and he can do it all. Uh -oh. who, who gave a teaching last year? This guy right here. Uh, he gave a beating last year <laughs> the, to the rest of the field. The angler of the year from 2019, Scott Canterbury, and he's in good shape on that same, very same list this time. A B&W trailer hitch is on the line opportunity with Scott Canterbury. Scott, you're doing great again in 2020, but how do, what are your prospects for this tournament? How do you see it playing out? I mean, it's this Lake Ufall is fishing great. It has been for a few years. I mean, a guy's going to have to have over 20 every day to, to make a run at it, but uh, it's a lot tougher bite on me today for sure. I'm just, uh, hopefully I've got enough stuff I can bounce around and catch enough to get in, just to stay in the hunt anyhow, but um, the bite just got a little bit tougher. I think the water came up some more. I looked last night and that just worries me about the shallow guys a lot because I know that the shallow bite's been really good this week, so uh, I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to stay out. I want a big, big worm on ledges and in brush, and uh, just I, I mean, I'm a shallow guy, but I, I think that's the way the tournament will be won, and that's what I practice for. Scott, this is one of those weird tournaments. Generally, this time of year, you could just go offshore, live offshore, but this is one of those rare tournaments with that water level, you know, and the combination of a full moon last week, where you always have that other voice saying. Maybe, maybe I should go up shallow, which is really different from usual events we have in June. It is, it is definitely. You know, you follow, it's got so many fish in it. It's so healthy that you can catch them up shallow, five pounders, just as well as you can catch them out deep. So uh, it's a pretty awesome lake. You just got to sort of pick your poison and uh, stick to your guns. I think if you run enough of if you'll commit and run enough of whatever you're doing, it seems to work for me. I, it's hard for me to bounce back and forth, but uh, I know a lot of shallow stuff, and I may bounce around a little bit this evening, but uh, I'd like to be feel like I was in the cut before I did that. Hey, Scott, for everybody on ESPN2 right now, are you going to win back-to-back -back Angler of the Year titles? <laughs> you know, to do, to accomplish that, it's like a, you know, a life goal, but to do it twice in a row or two times in your career. I mean, it just solidifies everything. But, uh, you know, it was awesome last year. I had a really, really, I got fortunate. A lot of times I was really blessed. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go out and fish hard every tournament. And uh, hopefully at the end of the year, I'll be in contention to have a shot at it. Scott, thank you so much for your time, your thoughts right there. Good luck for the rest of the day. Woo! Good yes, stuff. Thanks sir. a lot. I appreciate it. Let's take a look at that season last wow. year for Scott Canterbury. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a great start the first couple of days, or the first day of fishing at the St. John's River, but boy, he roared back. And I'll tell you, I, really, where we looked at maybe a little bit of a, a fall off, where he might tail off a bit, was when we got up north, and that's actually oh. where, where he was as consistent as any of the locals that were up north. And he actually came in to today's day of competition, second in Angler of the Year, just a few points behind Jake Whitaker. Those two guys got fifth and sixth as the St. John's. Both were in the top 10 after yesterday's competition. So after today, he could regain that Angler of the Year lead and basically look like 2019 all over again. You're not going to get many takers betting against what you proposed back to back. Right. Scott Canterbury, Angler of the Year, is looking real strong right now. But uh, we've got a lot of season left to come. As we say, calendar-wise, but uh, boy, the end of the season will be here before you know it in terms of number of fishing days. And these guys are trying to extend the number of fishing days today. If you can be in the top 40 today, you can fish at least for an extra day, get some more points, 
and have a shot at fishing for one more day, possibly, on Saturday, Championship Day. You know when you got an angler dialed in. See, so many of our anglers out on the water, there's 10 to 20 rods on their deck. If you look at Clark's boat, two, three rods, pretty much has locked a worm in all day and just done work with one technique. And I see we've got the camera in the boat with Drew Benton now. Felt like a big one. Which is disappointing, but throw it right back in there. always interesting to see this time of year looking at Clark Wendell and looking at Drew Benton guys fishing those you know standard big 10 inch worms but it always seems when you get past the month of May from Kentucky South they're always some hue of red uh. red bug plum uh, right, blue biggin. fleck it is across the board that color it's works from Texas all the way to to Alabama. Drew Benton, our leader, again owns one Bassmaster Elite Series title from a couple of years ago at the Toyota Bassmaster Texas Fest when it was held in, in Austin. On Lake Travis, utilizing boat docks and to some extent there. You know what we haven't had so far? Um, pardon me? What 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 are we lacking? An what official, an official one too. Oh. Oh, TH Marine Weather Watch. Well done. Oh, of course, exactly. Yes. Well, absolutely. It's a different day than yesterday. Yesterday, very hot, very oppressive and humid uh, before that front came through and uh, thankfully spared us the, the storm action. It's crazy how moved through mostly after the weigh-in, but now you can see the skies are brighter. It's a lot less humidity. You saw a lot more uh, sweatshirts this morning. Out on the Just water. so you know, for myself, it's been a well-awaited TH Marine weather watch today. <laughs> it is gorgeous. Uh, I like you. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a perfect day. Perfect summer day. Although yeah, yeah, the summer doesn't officially start till uh, I guess next week. End of next week. But it feels like it out there today. Chad Pipkins, what? On top. Wow. There's a story for you. We got to run that one down. That is for sure. 37 pounds, three ounces for Chad Pipkins, Michigan angler. Spent a lot of time on top of the leaderboard yesterday. We got another one having assumed the lead for today. So we will figure out what is the story with Chad Pipkins and so much more when we come back on Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. Breaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. 
leading the industry for over 50 years. These rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z Series. Unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Skeeter, is it still setting the standard? Let's see. First basketball, first U.S. Coast Guard approved basketball, first B-hole pad design, largest owners tournament, great fish and win program, first sponsored whole capacity concept, first production composite basketball. Yeah, way too much for 30 seconds. And 18 consecutive CSI awards. Now we have introduced the FX Apex series, a fully featured boat with so many standard options leaving nothing left to desire. So yes, yes we are still setting the standard. Skeeter. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. A little over a half an hour left in our morning session. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite here on Lake Eufaula. We'll step back for an hour and come back at noon Eastern time with the last three hours of the day. Same deal tomorrow, Friday day number three with 40 anglers out there. Day three coverage for you, starting again at 8 a.m. Eastern time. And the second session starting at 12 with the top 40 anglers again trying to make the final, trying to make that 10 man final on Saturday. And again, we did bring this up. A lot of folks thinking Saturday could be one of the tougher days because obviously days one and half of day two so far, it's been a beat down out here. Saturday, a mega huge, huge local tournament yeah. going on on Lake Eufaula. Not unheard of. Yeah, so here's <laughs> what I can tell you. Bassmaster Elite You're going to want to have a lot of spots to hit on Saturday, which we're starting to see who that could be. Yeah, I think we got a good idea about one of them anyway. Right. Who's got uh, literally hundreds. Chad Pipkins, the Michigan angler, has assumed the mantle of leader. Not quite at the halfway point of this tournament. We still got another five hours or so of fishing for these four or five Just hours. Just got a blog in on Pippins that he had caught. Andy Crawford, a photographer. Rolled up on him. He said he caught 10 fish in a row, nothing big. Then he lands a three and a half pounder. Wow. Keep our eye on Pipkins. Top the leaderboard. And Gerald Swindle with our big bag of the day. 18 pounds mm -hmm. is now in 10th place. Drew Benton, up until 10 minutes ago, was the leader in this tournament. Interesting. Drew Benton did make the comment about an hour and a half ago that he Hit something this morning, running shallower water, mm -hmm. knocked his lower unit pretty good. But he's made his way almost to the dam. That's a that's a forty mile run. Right? Yeah, so that's, a, that's I don't I don't think he gets a you know. Uh oh. Uh -uh. And there's Chad Pipkins. All right, so we run down Chad. Thank you, help me. Thought it was a good one at first. Not a bad one. That's probably not going to keep for Drew Benton. Let's talk to Chad Pipkins. And Chad, uh, I, I, some great pictures of you at the weigh-in yesterday. You seemed in a celebratory mood. Talk about yesterday and talk about today. What's been working for you? I mean, we're always in a celebratory mood, man. Well, yes. that's right. That's right. Definitely. It's, it's been fun. I've found a few groups of fish, and there's some really good community stuff. Sometimes you can't get on it. It's one of those deals. But there's a few places that not a lot of other guys so far have been fishing, and just crazy how these fish are moving. 
and I caught them quick in a different place yesterday. And, and today, like they were, they set up differently. We idled over and looking at the side scan on the hummingbird, like actually saw they shifted up and I had to get upwind of them. And I caught them like, like four in a row. And then same thing here. There's a, they were up on the break during practice. And then yesterday I caught them in a brush pile, like 25 foot of water. I'm like, I think those are bass. And we caught like 10 or 12 in a row and just did the same thing here, except they slid back to the other one. So. I think they're a lot like we are. They just move around, go to the living room, go to the go to the kitchen, go to the bedroom, and got to keep finding them each day. That's Jeff, what we're about to do. Are, are you having to to manage your areas and back off a little bit, or are you pressing them after seeing what was weighed in yesterday? Are you pressing these areas a little harder? Yeah, just a little bit because I just I don't know what's going to happen. I feel like I got enough fish, obviously, to fish again tomorrow. But, you know, if I get the right bites, you know, you never know. You might have a chance to win. So I don't want to back off and, and lose that because I didn't catch them. But, like, yesterday I left here catching, I think, six in a row. But they were all, like, three pounders, you know. And right now I just I just caught a four and a half, a three and a half, and a couple threes. And I'm like, I'll work on a couple two and a half, three pounders if, if I can catch another big one. Because I feel like we got, like, 16, 17 right now. And if you can get around that 20, 20 pound mark, I mean, it's just... It's not going to be easy for somebody to catch 22 every day. Like, things go wrong. So I feel like if I can be around 20 every day, you know, I, I could have a chance, you know. There, there's some good places I have yet to get on. Like, my two best places, I haven't caught, I haven't weighed a bass. I caught one at the end of the day yesterday, a four-pounder, but I haven't got to fish at like the right time. So hopefully uh, we can roll up at the right time. It happens quick. Like, these these bags are giant. But you don't catch them all day. You just you don't get a bite for two hours, and you show up and catch 10 or 15. That's Good stuff, Chad. Up. Sounds like a fun day going on out there. Sounds like uh, we may be spending the day with you tomorrow, and that's a good Sounds prospect like as well. We'd love to have that. That'll be able to, Chad. You know, this tournament reminds me a little bit of the Lake Fork event last year, and yes. Chad was one of the players in yes. that one for sure. Yes. Bill Lowen now. Uh, uh, Bill Lowen a little bit surprising yeah. today. Yeah, I figure he might. Get him early. I mean, the he rising was, water, he should have things in his favor. He was one fish every hour kind of yesterday where it'd be four-pounder here, another hour later, another four-pounder. He said there was a midday gig, though, that he went well, off. It was when Davey got to him. He's All right. The only one in our top 20 with four fish. Well, it ain't going like we want it to go. Um, my best thing, I got the wind lapping on it pretty hard. Um, so like I said before, we're trying to run this water well. If you look right here at the graph, um, that sets really close to a ditch or a creek channel. Um, and that's exactly what we got right here in front of us. So now we're just running around trying to hit some of that stuff, see if we can't make something happen. Um, got four so far, two decent ones and two little guys. Um, but we gotta have some big ones if we wanna have a chance. If we even wanna have a chance to go fishing tomorrow. Bill Lowen so close so many times to, to closing one out. Again, one of these great, great anglers who has not won an Elite Series event. Boy, he's come close. Oh, man. I mean, even in classics, he's, he'll get there. It's just, it's hard. It's hard and it's not guaranteed. I asked him that question during our, our three month break. We got on a Skype and I talked to him about it. I said, do you ever feel any pressure that you haven't won? He said, no, I feel like your legacy is built on the character that you lead. Sure. And that's why he's one of those guys that's set the example of giving out bass memberships to young kids that want to get yeah, into fishing. We've been steady like catching this. them all day. 15, 16, I don't know how many keepers I've caught, but I just not, I mean, I've caught a lot of two and a half pounders. But I mean, I got four two and a half pounders and a, maybe a four and a half pounder, something like that. It's just the way it is. I mean, it it it's a law of attrition a little bit. You just gotta, you know. I had a big one just a minute ago. I felt like that I had on for just a second, and he pulled really hard. But who knows? You know, that's just the way it goes.
couple of new additions to the top ten, or recent additions to the top ten. You see at the bottom of our uh, yeah. leaderboard there, Scott Canterbury, who we just talked to a few minutes ago, Gerald Swindle, uh, with uh, Such mentioned, the big bag of the day so far. Swindle just said he just had a bad execution day yesterday, just one of those days where you lost a couple of those key bites. I'm really not changing it up much. I want to give an update on the two guys that came in with zero on the leaderboard yesterday. Mark Menendez and Kelly J. Both have withdrawn from the event, basically. One, because of medical reasons with that the back injury you mentioned, Zona, with uh, yep. Menendez, the discs. And then uh, Kelly J. cited personal reasons, had to get back home. He lives in Alabama, not too far, but he needed to tend to that. So okay. he decided to pull himself out after yesterday during the day. Rare moment of uh, non-fish catching for right. Clark Winlet right, right. there. He's <laughs> gone three minutes without I, catching I, one. I, I feel disoriented now. There's a look at your leader, Chad Pipkin. He may have taken up the uh, most fish catching guy of the moment award for right now, based on what he told us. I have a feeling we'll be seeing Chad in action tomorrow. Michigan angler. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you brought up Lake Fork, Texas. Yeah, yeah. I remember Chad with his, with his crank. Oh, he was cranking them strong at Lake Fork. Big ones. Yes! 62 pounds over two days of competition wow. there. Mm. Yes, he was a hot mess that day. New In personal best. <laughs> that's that's the most memorable moment from the tournament. Got to right? be a ten pounder, or at least an eight or nine pounder, right? All right. Maybe some of that on the way this afternoon. We still got some more Bassmaster Live to come, though, as we take a look at Chad Pipkin still sitting atop the leaderboard, about a pound, a little less than a pound lead over Drew Benton, Wentland, Canterbury, and Swindle, as we mentioned, have joined the fray in the top ten. Chris Saldane, Todd Auten hanging in there. Jamie Hartman and I think Kyle Monty still going to creep around that 20 pounds a day to have a top six camera going into day three. Well, we believe you. You called it yesterday. We'll see how it works out today. We'll be back with more Bassmaster Live. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. This reel allows you to cover more water, make more casts, giving you more opportunities to catch more fish. The new Revo Rocket, Abu Garcia for life. I can vividly remember back when I was a kid and, you know, searching for information. And it was so much work and it was such a struggle to get that knowledge, to get that information. We talked about the equipment, we talked about the bait, we talked about how to pick it apart. It's highly detailed, specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly. That's what the Bash University is all about.
I'm pro anger Andy Montgomery. I've been making my living with Strike King products for a long time. So when they showed me the new tour grade line, I was all in. I knew I could trust it. What I didn't know was how easy it was to use. With the spooling tool and the prepaid envelope to recycle your old line included in every single box. Not only is it the best line on the market, it gives you the easiest fishing experience possible. Find out more at StrikeKing.com. You're watching the DeWalt's Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula, being brought to you live by Minn Kota. Second stop of the regular season for the Bassmaster Elite Series here at legendary Lake Eufaula. Of course, like all our regular season events, this is a four-day event. It's one of the rules of the game, 86 anglers out there right now. They fished yesterday, they'll fish today. Big cut at the end of the way in today to the top 40. Only those will fish on day number three. Eight hours a day for every angler. Five fish limit allowed for every angler on each day. And that's our cut line right yes. there. If you're below 26 pounds, you you're going home. You, if it's that way at right. the end of the day, Today. you are going, right. yes, and you. Okay, Brandon Cobb, who won two events last year, just like Jamie Jamie Hartman. Look at him. He's in danger. Uh, Brock Mosley is thinking hard about it. Brandon Polinick, whom we spent a lot of time with yesterday, needs to uh, up the game a little bit, get a little uh, And that little will room. go up. Oh, yeah. Significantly. Oh, sure. If you tuned in to Bassmaster yesterday on ESPN2. Here's really been the tale of the tape of this tournament. It is the first three-hour window where they are biting and biting. And then you got Clark Wendell had set it up, and we got to see it yesterday. Uh, it's been a lot better today. You'll see a little bit of a lull like for a couple hours, see. and then it'll fire right after lunch. You said Bill to Bill Lowen told you that yes. uh, the after lunch and even yes. a little bit right at the noon hour was good for him. He's a little bit behind schedule today. Another guy we didn't see on that bubble leaderboard, Jake Whitaker. Another dude in the top 10 fishing shallow like Lowen, only one fish right now in the 50s. Did he catch a lot of fish yesterday? 10. Well, I'm not timing it out very good right now. Um, you know, I wanted to let the sun get up a little bit um, and try to get on this stuff. So it gets them fish tighter into that grass where we want them to be. Um, you know, we started out, you know, throwing a frog and running shallow this morning in the low light um, and caught a few, but the water will have definitely been my deal. Um, and I think that's probably what we end up doing the rest of the day now, is just running water will and trying to get a couple good bites. I feel like if I get a bite out of the water willow, it's going to be a good fish. Um, but right now, boy, I cannot get a bite. I, I mean, I caught them all day yesterday doing this. It wasn't like it was a little flurry. Um, so I ain't panicking yet, but it sure feel nice to have a, a limit, at least a limit in the boat. Good stuff right there from Bill Lowen. And real quick, Kyle Welcher, we've been watching him all day long. Leave Bill Lowen right here. But it was fireworks that Kyle Welcher, first year rookie here on the Bassmaster Elite Series, made earlier this year with a giant bass on the St. Johns River. Absolutely huge catch earlier this season for Kyle Welcher. Giant one, dude. Giant one. Giant one. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me get my hands on you. Oh my God, dude! Look at that one, baby. Holy crap! What? Woo! What? 
giant there in the St. John's River. What a way what to a start. Great catch, man. What a way to start your elite career right there. Kyle Welcher from Alabama here. One of the great stories out there. And of course, when he set the hook on that fish, it almost looked like that fish moved his entire body. <laughs> it did. It's like he was trying to uh, trying to pull down a great fence post catch, or something. Man. Awesome. Gosh. His Marshal Les Cook got that awesome footage for us and is also marshaling this week at you follow. There's Kyle Welcher right now. Kyle, uh, once again, great congratulations on a great start to your elite season. And uh, tell us how, how this second stop's been going for you. Well, yesterday I had a good wait. But if you would have been in the boat all day, it was actually a train wreck. And just everybody I happened to get was just a bit. So yesterday I couldn't hardly get any bites. And like everything I would need, I ran like 30 spots in a row without getting a single bite off of it. Wasted like four hours. And then hit a little flurry. I hit a little flurry early, caught a couple. And then I hit a little flurry in the middle of the day, and then caught a couple. And that was like at 11 o'clock. And I had one more bite late in the evening. So, I mean, we didn't get a lot of bites yesterday. We had a good wait. Today we're getting a lot more bites. We haven't caught a big one yet. Well, Kyle, the best of luck to you. Boy, uh, let's let's stop the train wreck. That's my guy <laughs> and, and right And get there. it going. Absolutely. Kyle Welcher, Rookie of the Year leader to start this day. And we'll be watching Kyle throughout this tournament. Something tells us we'll be uh, seeing more of him here at Lake Eufaula, the Alabama native Kyle Welcher. It's Chris Aldane, obviously back shallow again. Oh, he, Zaldane said, he said, he's. we got to see him yesterday. He was... After he caught his limit early, he went through a big swim bait Great shallow and said, man, I'm going to lay it down. We're in the border of Alabama and Georgia right now. And I'm originally from California, so I get to see all the different fisheries and all the different wildlife in every region. One of the perks of traveling and fishing. I'm just throwing a weedless frog here with some braided line and it's this topwater frog that you just kind of scoot along the tops of these lily pads. It looks just like a, a real frog scooting along, kind of panicked. And if there's a bass cruising around within 10, 15, a 10 or 15 foot radius, it feels those vibrations up on the surface and it sees that thing walking across the surface and it, it can't resist. That's when you get those big bites. And topwater fishing is some of the best, uh, it's one of the best techniques you could use targeting the larger than normal bass. And I think it's because, you know, a bass, whether it be a little fingerling, you know, four inches long, five inches long, or a four or five pounder, they always eat insects, you know. Um, from an early age, they always just eat insects off the surface. It's a go-to food source. And this little hollow belly frog, it just sits right on top just like a dragonfly would or a grasshopper or a whatever it might be. So it looks super natural to these fish and they, they chew it up when you get around them. If you want to know the reason to fish any lure in your box, you want it laid out in detail, that's the man for the job. Oh, you want right to see there. that happen, though. Oh, you want my to see gosh. that top yeah, Let's keep that tight shot on that, on that. And Chris Saldane, how about five top 10 finishes last year in 2019, including three second place finishes? You know, and it was from really the start of the season. Had a great Bassmaster Classic on Fort Loudon in Tennessee. And the consistency and the momentum, all of us here in studio, the whole Bassmaster crew are like, he's a matter of one tournament of putting a win away and just never got over that hump to hold the trophy. Lake Gunnersville, where he finished second to Jamie Hartman, who's been the leader for much of this morning. And then at Cayuga Lake, same thing again, a second place, making a huge charge on the final day. As Ronnie and Such said it, to have the season that he had and not win Angler of the Year shows you exactly how consistent our Angler of the Year champion, Scott Canterbury, was all season long. Absolutely great point. Second to 10 killer as well at that rescheduled tournament there late in the season. Such a pretty spot right there. I wish there was about three more feet of water on it, but that's a pretty spot. It's just a little too shallow. They've got a 
they got to swim across that berm there and swim across a big, large, shallow flat, a foot and a half, two feet of water to get to these spots this time of year. That's cool in April, March, April, but this time of year you need some deep water access. Let's go find that deep water access. Four or five feet of water. You know, really what we've seen transpire today with the guys that are fishing shallow, Bill Lowen, as you said, Jake Whitaker, Ron Moore, uh, only with one fish so far today. Guys that were fishing shallow, we talked about it. Will those shallow fish reload? And so far, looking at it, they have not. No, no, no. It's been the deep bite. The guys like Clark Wendland and Jamie Hartman. The Saldane, of course, uh, early on with a giant fish there. Making the big waves this morning, but boy, it has been entertaining. You could, you can have to, well, you absolutely have to say that. Chad Pipkins also fishing out deep. The man on top right now. We can chance to talk to him for just a moment. Sounds like an exciting day going on. More excitement on the way. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is being brought to you live by Mincota. What do a taco and a taco truck have in common? Nothing. If you want to play, you need a Tacoma. Sign up to compete in the inaugural Hook Bassmaster BASS Nation Kayak Series, powered by Tourney X, presented by Abu Garcia in 2020. The trail features five regular season events, with a championship to be held in conjunction with the 2021 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. The first tournament will be at Logan Martin Lake in Hell City, Alabama on March 5th, in conjunction with the 50th Bassmaster Classic. To find out more details and to register, visit Bassmaster.com slash kayak. If you love bass fishing, then show your support by joining BASS today. With your membership, you'll receive every issue of Bassmaster Magazine, plus $50 in free gear, including a membership tackle bag, BASS cap, plus more. Click now on this video to join today. Bassmaster sweepstakes prizes are crazy good, and you'd be crazy not to enter. Yeah, baby! Enter now to win a fishing trip with 50th Bassmaster Classic champion Hank Cherry. Trip includes airfare, rental car, hotel, and $500 cash, plus a Bascat Sabre FTD with Mercury 150 Pro XS Garmin Electronics and an amazing prize pack. Total value more than $50,000. There's a 100% chance you won't win if you don't enter. Go to Bassmaster.com and up the odds in your favor. It's fast and easy, and who knows? You could win. If you want to know how the best anglers always seem to find fish, stay on fish, and be in the right place at the right time, don't ask them. Just look at the name on the side of their boat. The one that's built 10 million motors, shallow water anchors, and more. No angler's going to tell you their secrets, but they don't have to, because you already know. Minn Kota, fish for more. The DeWalt Bassmaster Elite at Lake Eufaula is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Berkeley, Nitro Boats, and by Ranger Boats. What a morning it has been on legendary Lake Eufaula today, second day of the DeWalt Elite event this legendary place and we're getting close to the time when we uh, step back let them fish for an hour at noon and uh, we'll, we'll roll tape get all the highlights for you and come back with our Bassmaster live at noon today for the three hours leading up to the weigh-in Lake Eufaula Chad Pipkins the man on top Drew Benton Clark Wendland and Lake Eufaula 
it's it's a mature lake, but it's not been around as, as long as some of these big Tennessee River lakes. It was impounded in the early 60s, came into full bloom, of course, about five or six years later. That's the way these, it's about that the same time frame as a place like, say, Toledo Bend. So, uh, you know, that's thus explains a lot of timber under the water. You wish you could pull back the water and look at what's under there. And I think, guys, uh, Mark Zona, Ron Moore, we're going to do that right uh -oh. now, aren't we? Yeah, Tommy, we were talking about it. Those guys fishing shallow are going to be hard to catch up to those guys fishing deep. They're fishing for single solitary fish, unlike those guys fishing offshore zona on those brush piles that, that standing timber under Eufaula. Exactly right. And the great thing about being here at Eufaula, Humminbird, Depth Finders is right down the road. And we had Mark Gibson from Humminbird actually go out to some of the areas that these guys are fishing. And right here is an image looking straight down. Your transducer basically pans out underneath your boat. You can see standing timber, brush in between, and this is bait fish with bass underneath. But here's the great thing. Let's go to, we've talked about Mega 360 imaging. And if you've never followed bass fishing, what a lot of these guys are focusing on, if this is the front of your boat right here, basically it's an underwater sonar. And this is a perfect image that we received from Lake Eufaula earlier this morning. You can make the exact cast. If you look at about two o'clock, your boat's facing 12 o'clock. You can make a cast to two o'clock and your radius is 60 feet around your boat. And if you look at about, call it 30 feet at two o'clock, you will nail that brush pile right there. And that's exactly how we're seeing this tournament dominated right now. Let's get back out on the water. Good stuff, guys. That, that, I, we did want to see underwater and we, we got a good look at it right there. Thanks to some of that uh, technology. Z, the screen of knowledge seems to have more knowledge when you join, when you join me over there. I am intimidated by the screen of knowledge, to be sure. quite honest with you. <laughs> I like being at the desk with Tommy and not up there. <laughs> Valuable tool. We've learned so but much. Well, you can learn. Is, it, it really, you know what was interesting? Listening to Clark Wendelin, who has done this, for 70 years. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah. Clark yeah. Wendland sure. has fished a million tournaments. But if you would have asked him 10 years ago, could you be able to, with, you know, Clark sponsored by a, a different depth finder company, as, as a lot of our anglers are. Right. But if you're able to look at your electronics and make an exact cast to not just a stump, but to a limb coming off of a stump in 10 to 15 feet of water where your eyes literally, your eyes used to be your bait, in right. all honesty. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is how you were able to feel the bottom. But to literally see a rock adjacent to a stump in 15 feet of water, that is staggering. Yeah. Matt Airy just jumped into our top 10 with 14 and a half today. Had a couple big fish behind Chris Aldane, six at eight that leads the Phoenix Boats Big Bass. David Fritz with a five and a half pounder. Keith Combs there with the 5-2, and Todd Otten is 5, and Bernie Schultz, 5-pounder. I don't think Keith Combs is quite out of this tournament yet. Okay. Granted, he had 18-something yesterday, which, sadly, if you would not have thought this, is in golf terms, he was below, or he was above par. Yeah, yeah. He was 29th. Dang. Right now he's 15th. With a couple one-pounders in his limit. What'd you say his total was now, Combs? He's got about 14 today. He's 15th okay. place. Okay. 4'11 behind the lead. You could tell. Jake Whitaker, four and a half pounder, just came across the board. 4'2, sorry. All his fish just came across the board. Oh, so he might have been out of service, you're saying. So that's we what might I'm have saying. been 100% wrong about how bad the shallow game has been. That's, that's good. All right, know. let's go. He's jumped up with, he's how got about, like. How about a future? Four for Marine eight. Weather report. Oh, look into the crystal ball. <laughs> exactly. How about right. tomorrow's? There's, there's what you're looking at. 89 degrees. Going to be a little bit warmer tomorrow, but still very, very agreeable. Low at 67 tonight, so a bit cooler than it has been at night over the past week or so down here. It's been uh, kind of sweltering down here in southern Alabama. Polar opposite. Polar opposite of what the practice conditions were yeah, earlier yeah. this oh, week. Oh, yeah. Well, I bet the humidity feels way, way better than yesterday, 78%. It's only 59 today. The cold front breezed through and made it 
way nicer. We saw a little bit of rain yesterday on certain anglers like Jockamson and Carl Jockamson and some of those guys that would just briefly get rained on. Last night after weigh-in, the bottom seemingly dropped out of Eufaula and it poured down rain. One huge cell covered the lake and then it's bluebird skies today. So mm -hmm. would this be, it's quick enough to be completely post frontal today, right Z? The screen of knowledge when I'm up there with you honestly intimidates me. It, it does, it's your house. It's your okay. Are you telling Ronnie just right. ask the screen of knowledge and leave me alone for yes. a bit here? Let me rub my, I'll rub, I'll rub yeah, my sorry. magic eight ball. It's been a long morning so, session. Uh, I don't think I answered your question. Post, post I, frontal I apologize. screen of knowledge, okay. <laughs> yeah, why don't you ask your screen I, of knowledge? <laughs> I will say this. You can have something perfectly made up in your mind to say, and you say it flawlessly sitting down. You walk over there, you'll completely mess it up. I'd guarantee I, it. Trust you. Well, I, I don't say anything <laughs> flawlessly. And the guys in the truck remind you what you messed up on. I've heard you in a restaurant order flawlessly. Clark Winlet doing a little worming around the boat docks here. Guys, I'm wondering what you think about the 40th place cut. It was 17-4 yesterday. Would it be... Uh, if we doubled that, that's 34 and a half pounds, I think. Yeah. 34 and a yep. half pounds. Do you think it's less than that today? I mean, I, I I'm going to go a hair less. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think it'll 30, be one of those subtract a pound or you know or so. We 30, normally double it and subtract or add. I don't think by a lot though. I don't think by a, by a ton. I think less than a pound. Right now, pound X in 40th with uh, about 27 pounds. So there's a lot of fishing left. If you're just tuning in here, the Bass Masters, it, it, it fired yesterday after lunch. I mean, it went again. There was mm -hmm. th this, sure did. this was the lull yesterday, but boy, when we came back, came back from our midday break, it was, it was happening. Yeah. Bill Lowen, as we say, a little bit behind schedule, needs to get his midday bonus started here as, as soon as he possibly can. I think he's looking great to make the 40 cut. <laughs> Either way, but our leader would like to be close to that lead at the end of the day, our leader to start the day. Talk to the mayor, you follow Jack Tibbs, who's also a tournament angler, and he said he's won a couple of smaller weekend events last, last was 23 pounds, one day event. On there. Well, this yeah. is how we started this morning. Chris Aldane, that's uh, man, that that'll wake you up. Yeah. Stay down there, big head. Stay Stay down there. Oh, yeah. Clark Winlet. Look at the mouth on that thing. Jamie Hartman. <laughs> oh, the better ones. Bill caught early. Little surprising morning though. You could tell. I guarantee you that. Bill Lowen scratching a little bit from this morning. We really thought he was going to come out firing. Yeah. Get in here. Good catches, though. Good catches. Oh, yes. Now we're cooking, baby. Well, as promised, we're going to step yes. back for about an hour, and we'll be back with more yeah. at noon Eastern. Bassmaster Woo. live, Tommy. It's Woo. live. See you then. Brandon.